Do you know how scary it is when a zombie becomes disciplined? His name is Zombie. His age is unknown. When he died is also unknown. He only remembers the first day after the zombie outbreak. He was unable to escape and became one of them. After that, he wandered around with his kind until one day humans appeared with weapons that emitted blue light. From then on, the zombie army was defeated and some zombies were even enslaved by humans. Zombie didn't understand why zombies had to eat people or why humans had to exterminate zombies. But he knew that if he wanted to survive, he had to become stronger. So from that day on, Zombie began his disciplined life. If he wasn't swimming around the world a few times a day, he was lifting weights for hours on end. He even ate protein powder as food. So Zombie became bald but also became stronger. Despite this, he still only wanted to be friends with humans. In order to achieve this dream, he once rescued human cubs from a fire and even caught a plane with his bare hands to avoid a major disaster. When facing an oncoming train at high speed, he only needed one punch to solve the problem. In order to get along better with humans, he gathered all the zombies in an abandoned city and required them to eat eggs every day. However, one day when Zombie was buying eggs in the supermarket, he found that his subordinates were on the wanted list again. At the same time, two reporters were secretly taking pictures nearby. They didn't believe that Zombie had the ability to lift a plane with his bare hands. But the next second they were stunned by what they saw. Zombie lifted a truck weighing tens of tons with one hand and then jumped on the spot and broke through the atmosphere with the truck in an instant. After circling most of the earth, Zombie finally arrived at his territory. The zombies who saw this scene were very excited, but two zombie cubs next to them asked, King, why didn't you drive the truck over? Because I don't have a driver's license, Zombie replied awkwardly after answering the question. He then came to where his subordinates were gathered and various zombie bosses inside were already getting impatient waiting for him. But when Zombie opened the door for a moment, his subordinates still quickly stood in two rows. At this time, Zombie slapped the wanted order on Ago's body and said, Ago, what's going on? How did you get wanted by humans again? Ago was sweating profusely and then explained tremblingly that he couldn't control himself when he met humans. At this time Blackie also said, Although our zombie territory is still expanding infinitely, we have changed several capitals in order to avoid humans. Varman even proposed the idea of going to war with humans, it's been so long that my chainsaw is going to rust. But just as Zombie was about to educate them about how terrible humans are, there was a sudden loud rumbling sound from the sky. It turned out that human fighter jets had unknowingly arrived above them and the commander inside was actually a young woman with a heroic appearance. At this moment, the president on the fighter jet was looking at the screen data and pondering. Two subordinates reported to her. Everything was ready and they could act at any time. The president tilted her head slightly and asked, where is the cargo? It turned out that there was a stunningly powerful heavyweight nuclear bomb on the fighter jet. Come on, I'm going to level this place in 20 minutes. At this moment, Zombie Below also sensed the crisis. Varmint was even more gleaming in his eyes, shouting and wanting to rush up and fight them desperately. But at this time, Zombie stopped him and said, No, you will become out of control when you get close to humans. You should take the citizens and evacuate here first. As for those humans, let me go and meet them instead. Soon after, some armed trucks also slowly drove into here. Their mission was to search for survivors on the ground. At this moment, the cockpit door of the fighter jet suddenly opened. A fully armed white-haired boy stood tall in the middle. Facing the dense zombies below, he was not panicked at all. Instead, he curved his lips and vowed to kill all the bosses here. At the same time, a man in a white coat was staring at the screen in front of him. Brother Fay, that seems to be a person from the Extraordinaries Academy Academy. Hearing this, the man's mouth curled slightly and said, let's play with them well. After saying that, he pressed a red button hard. Immediately, a cage full of humans fell from the sky, finally landing slowly in the middle of the zombie horde. At the same time, the rescue team also received the desperate distress signal from the humans. Immediately, they tried their best to suppress them slowly with firepower. But at this time, a red-haired girl suddenly screamed, how can that zombie not die? Looking in the direction she pointed, they saw two zombie cubs hugging each other and shivering. And blocking in front of them, was actually our male protagonist, Zombie. 
Suddenly, a blonde soldier raised a rocket launcher and aimed at the zombie. However, at this time someone reminded the blonde soldier, Sir, we seem to have bombed the wrong person. This zombie mask man, seems to be the recently emerging extraordinary human. The blonde soldier was stunned by what he saw. He had accidentally blown up the wrong person. But as the white smoke cleared, Zombie was standing there unharmed, touching his head with a puzzled look. At this moment, Prezipant on the fighter jet suddenly spotted the zombie boss's trail. So she ordered the white-haired boy to go to Zone B and intercept him. As soon as she finished speaking, the white-haired boy immediately leaped from the fighter jet at a height of 100 meters. On the other side, the man in the white robe started his mysterious plan in a certain room. Brother Fay, I didn't expect them to evacuate the civilians. They are not to be messed with. Hearing this, Faye smiled slightly and tilted her head. Let's give them something fun then. The green-haired man nodded immediately in understanding. Then under his control one of the zombies in the horde suddenly underwent a horrifying mutation in a short while. And his change also caught the attention of zombie in the distance. But just then, the blonde soldier from the rescue team suddenly sprinted. While Zombie was still confused, he hoisted him up and ran towards his own convoy. He muttered as he ran that he had saved his life. After throwing Zombie onto the car, he hurriedly urged the driver to run faster. And so the Zombies' boss was successfully rescued. On the way, the red-haired girl asked him why he always wore a zombie mask. Zombie looked embarrassed when he heard this. He didn't know how to answer. Meanwhile, the other rescue team also ran into trouble. They saw the mutated zombie lift up a bus. Then he threw it at them with great force. Fortunately, the white-haired boy appeared in time. He cut the bus in half with just one slash. The crowd cheered when they saw this scene. Great, it's the president of the academy's swordsmanship club. We're saved now. Marshall told them to take the civilians away first. He would handle the rest. Just then, the zombie let out a piercing scream, as if it was suffering from great pain. Marshall noticed this and quickly drew his knife, facing the zombie's attack, he slashed down. The zombie's body instantly cracked with numerous fissures, then exploded with a bang, shattering into pieces. He thought he could end the fight early, but he heard a rush of footsteps, interrupting his sense of victory. Marshall turned his head and looked at the source of the sound. He saw a zombie had quietly walked to the side of that zombie without him noticing. Zombie said, I'm sorry, I'm too late. When Marshall heard that, he immediately classified him as one of the zombies. Then he raised his knife and slashed at zombie. But the next second he was stripped naked and hung on a power pole. At the same time, the soldiers on the plane also noticed something was wrong. Oh no, Marshall's health is dropping fast. The president was stunned to hear this. Marshall was actually defeated. Damn it, there are still civilians who haven't gotten out. We can't drop the bomb on them. She gave a slight shake and jumped off the fighter jet. Zombie was baffled by what was happening. Another figure appeared in the air, speeding towards him. It was the commander of this mission. She quickly drew her sword from her waist. And then she slashed at Zombie with her move, White Blade. But the next second, the sword that could cut through anything shattered with a loud crack. Prezipant, who witnessed this scene, was incredulous. Zombie, on the other hand, was unscathed. Prezipant's eyes widened slightly. What the hell is this thing? She then hastily jumped back and put several meters of distance between them. Zombie looked a bit embarrassed at the woman who suddenly appeared, and quickly explained, Well, I already apologized earlier. Hearing the zombie speak, Prezipant was also shocked. But she wouldn't let go of the enemy in front of her, and immediately pulled out her second sword, coldly saying, Come on, let me see how powerful you really are. Zombie shook his head helplessly, I said, can't you humans listen to me patiently until I finish talking? Before he finished his sentence, Prezipant rushed at him like an arrow. She thought her speed was unmatched, but she didn't expect to miss this strike. She immediately turned 360 degrees and used her ultimate move, Red Blade. Red flashes of light swept across, cutting everything in half that they touched, even the buildings around them. However, under such an attack, Zombie just bent down slightly and dodged it. Damn it, you're playing with me. The survivors around were almost done evacuating, 
and even Marshall who was knocked out by the zombie was dragged onto the car. The assistant on the fighter jet called Prezipant urgently, telling her to come back quickly. But Prezipant was fighting with the zombie fiercely, and had no time to care. The zombie was also helpless, why was this woman so persistent? Prezipant had never been able to touch the zombie's edge, and now she was almost going crazy. They chased each other across half of the city. Prezipant saw that she couldn't catch up with the zombie, and immediately activated her second form. Her calves suddenly spewed out a lot of white gas, and after charging up, she shot out like a sharp sword. She came to the zombie's back in an instant, and then used her strongest move. The two landed almost at the same time. Target eliminated. Prezipant thought she had taken care of the zombie. As she was talking to the fighter jet on the radio, a mysterious force was plotting something on the other side. They had even planted a spy in Prezipant's team. Just when everyone was cheering for their rescue, the spy on the jet suddenly activated the nuclear bomb launcher. And then he pressed the button without hesitation. With a click sound. The next second, the heavy-duty nuke dropped from the jet. At this point, the spy in the cockpit had been subdued by the other two. When they reported this news to the others, everyone showed a fearful expression. Looking at the nuke that was falling fast, Prezipant started to panic too. Then she quickly opened the ejector seat and tried to jump back to the jet. But the next second she froze in place. It turned out that her fight with Zombie had drained all her energy. Just when Prezipant didn't know what to do, Zombie suddenly appeared in front of her with a flash. Then before she could react, Zombie grabbed her and spun her around on the ground. Then Prezipant was thrown into the sky, and finally landed precisely on her jet. It took her a while to come to her senses. Suddenly, she realized with horror that the zombie was still alive. At this point, the nuke was less than one kilometer from the ground. However, Zombie didn't seem to have any intention of dodging. He lifted his foot and kicked hard. The ground cracked open around him as the center. And Zombie flew into the air like a sharp sword. For his citizens. He bravely faced the nuke. Just before he touched the nuke, Zombie stretched out his fingers and clenched them. With a bang, he actually smashed the nuke's warhead flat. Everyone who saw this scene showed an incredulous expression. A loud boom echoed through the sky and earth. As a huge mushroom cloud rose up, Zombie completely disappeared into the flames. After a long time, when the flames slowly died out in the ruins, Prezipant on the jet showed a terrified expression. She saw a figure falling from the sky. Zombie scratched his head and thought, Oh, I have to spend money to buy clothes again. While Zombie was worried about having nothing to wear, Prezipant on the fighter jet started to feel depressed. What's wrong with Prezipant? Why is he so gloomy? You better not ask. Prezipant fought zombies all his life, but now he was saved by a zombie. That kind of mood would make anyone unhappy, right? But then another subordinate suddenly shouted. Prezipant, you got it wrong. She took the zombie's file and came forward to explain. This guy is not a zombie. He is an abnormal human who likes to wear a zombie mask lately. Hearing this, the girl's face instantly darkened like she wanted to eat someone. The next day, a ragged man came to the human city. Zombie quickly teleported to a phone booth. He was relieved when he learned that his men had safely retreated. But little did he know, his every move in the city was captured by the cameras. As soon as he returned to his rental room naked, Prezipant spotted his trail through the surveillance. At this moment, Zombie seemed to feel that he was being watched. And looking at the naked zombie, the girl's face was full of black lines. One day, Zombie was doing his usual self-discipline training, but thinking of his brothers who were still homeless. Zombie couldn't help but wonder. He didn't know if they had settled down well. However, at this moment, his door was suddenly kicked open by someone. It was the woman he had saved before. She ordered her men to start moving things around as soon as she entered. While Zombie was still confused, the woman suddenly took out an admission letter and put it in front of his eyes. We are from the Beyonders Academy. We are here to inform you that you have been accepted. From now on, you are a member of our academy. After saying that, she pointed at Zombie. A few men in suits got the order and approached him in an instant. But Zombie protested quickly. What are you guys doing? Can zombies go to school too? However, Prezipant insisted that he was just a human wearing a zombie mask. And so, the poor zombie was forced to enroll in the Beyonders Academy. 
At this point, the redhead girl said. Precipent, is it okay for us to recruit people privately like this? And the dorms are full now too. Hearing this, Precipent thought for a moment and then said. Then let him stay with me for now. Zombie was totally confused by the woman in front of him. Seeing that she didn't say anything for a long time, he asked tentatively. So, do I live here from now on? And where do I sleep? What's the problem? Or do you want to sleep with me? She said to him. Zombie quickly waved his hands to show that he didn't mean that. But actually he had some fantasies in his mind. However, at this moment, the woman said to him. You can stay in the guest room next door. Hearing this, Zombie felt a bit disappointed and said. Um, I think you guys got it wrong. I'm not a human. The woman didn't answer after hearing his words. Instead, she started to fiddle with her legs. Just when Zombie was puzzled, she actually took off her legs. Then she calmly explained. I cut off these legs myself. It turned out that when she was a girl, there was a zombie outbreak in her village. Her parents not only turned into zombies, but also bit her legs. She had to chop off her own legs in order to survive. And she also killed her zombified parents with her own hands. It was from that moment on that she swore to kill any zombie she encountered. Hearing this, Zombie quickly swallowed back the truth that he was a zombie. Then the woman looked at Zombie and asked. What were you going to say just now? Uh, you must have heard it wrong. I didn't say anything. To ease the awkwardness, Zombie quickly changed the topic and asked. What is this Beyonders Academy you guys mentioned? The woman didn't pursue the previous topic either. Instead, she started to tell Zombie about the history of the Academy. It had been more than a thousand years since the zombie outbreak. In order for humans to survive better, the government created the Beyonders Academy. And this academy was specially designed to train talents who could deal with zombies. Hearing this, Zombie couldn't help but think of how he looked like when he became a zombie. He didn't expect that he was already over a thousand years old now. Then the woman said to him. Tomorrow is the registration time for the academy. If you don't show up, we will be investigating your motive for trying to run away. And by the way, my name is Violet. The one you met tomorrow, Dawn, will show you around. Hearing this, Zombie was baffled. Dawn, do I know this human? Standing in front of the Beyonders Academy, Zombie looked completely confused, so much so that he didn't even hear Dawn when she tried to greet him. This made Dawn angry and she started to scold Zombie. After throwing a final remark about the upcoming assessment, she stormed off towards the academy. Zombie, realizing he had made a mistake, quickly caught up with her and asked if the school required an entrance exam. As it turns out, this academy only accepts students with special abilities, and if their assessment scores don't meet the requirements, they won't be admitted. They arrived at the assessment site and saw hundreds of new students, each with their own unique physical appearance due to their special abilities. Since there were too many new students, Dawn had to ride on Zombie's head to get a better view. Curious, Zombie asked if he was exempt from the assessment since he had lifted an airplane in front of humans before. However, Dawn explained that lifting an airplane was only considered a common ability in this academy and that the teachers there didn't pay attention to the news. Suddenly, a limping old man slowly made his way to the podium. Hello, I am your examiner. You may also call me sports department's president, Chen, he introduced himself. The academy has been around for hundreds of years, and during that time, we have trained a variety of talents. Hope you can train hard like your predecessors and become an outstanding student. However, before he could finish his speech, Zombie suddenly interrupted with a question. Um, what if a zombie was among the students, he asked. The examiner's response was blunt, we'll tear it limb from limb, and we will neuter it. Hearing this, Zombie felt a sharp pain in his lower body. Next up was the assessment, starting with a race. At the sound of the starting gun, the students rushed out like swords, running 100 meters in just 3 seconds. However, Zombie was still standing on the starting line, looking completely bewildered. They soon arrived at the second stage, which was a shooting competition. With a stylish pose, Dawn fired several bullets, and in the next second, the zombie head on the target was completely shot off. Uh... To avoid revealing his identity as a zombie, Zombie had to act cautiously and keep a low profile. He would always just pass the assessments with scores right on the passing line. While others had to run the 100 meter dash in under 10 seconds to pass, he would run it in exactly 9.57 seconds. 
And while others had to throw the shot put over 80 meters to pass, he would just throw it to 80.1 meters. However, despite his efforts to go unnoticed, Chen had taken notice of Zombie's behavior. He looked at the data in his hand and pondered for a moment. All of Zombie's subjects had only just reached the passing line, yet Violet said he was very strong. Was this person hiding his true strength or did he have some secrets he was keeping? Soon, the next assessment arrived, testing the student's ability to throw a javelin. A red-haired boy took a stance and unleashed all his power. The next moment, the javelin flew out like a shooting star and hit the zombie target's lower body with a bang. Zombie, who witnessed the scene, felt a chill down his spine. The javelin had pierced through three zombie targets in an instant and still showed no sign of slowing down. Finally, it stuck into a road sign 32 kilometers away. Soon after the red-haired boy finished his assessment, Zombie stepped up to the stage. As he walked past, the red-haired boy gave him a disdainful look. However, Zombie did not react much and quietly picked up the javelin to begin his low-key assessment. Suddenly, Chen called out to stop him, attracting the attention of those around them. He walked up to Zombie and asked, You're Zombie, the one introduced by Violet, right? She said you're very strong, but every time you take an assessment, you just barely pass. Are you hiding something? Everyone here is putting in all their effort, but you seem to be holding back. Are you a zombie? Upon hearing this statement, Zombie quickly waved his hands to indicate that he is, in fact, a human. Chen then stated, if your spear can be thrown more than 4 kilometers, I'll acknowledge that you're qualified. But if you can't, I'll charge you with espionage and castrate you. At this point, Zombie was completely dumbfounded. Ever since he turned into a zombie, he had been living in hiding, constantly exercising every day just to stay alive and avoid being captured by humans. So when Chen issued his challenge, Zombie thought to himself, I'll just throw it as far as I can. Without hesitation, Zombie raised the spear in his hand, and with a flash of red in his eyes, a powerful energy surged through the exam hall. In just a moment, the spear had flown into space, piercing a satellite with a loud pop and continuing on its trajectory towards the moon. The students in the exam room were all blown away by Zombie's tremendous power. Chen cursed in disbelief at the destruction caused by a mere human. Unbeknownst to him, a gaping hole had been created on the surface of the moon, caused by the spear's impact. The power of this thousand-year-old zombie is terrifying. His spear, thrown casually, can create a hole on the moon with ease. The force of the throw even caused the entire field to shatter, and the onlooker students were directly lifted off their feet. As they watched the students falling from the sky and the calm zombie in the field, both the examiner and students were amazed and in shock. Dawn looked at zombie in admiration and asked, You're so amazing. How far did you throw it? Zombie scratched his head in embarrassment and said, I don't know either. I just tried my best like I was told to. Hearing this, a meteorite that was about to hit the earth was scared out of its wits. After passing the test, Zombie successfully passed the assessment. He asked Dawn if he could go home now with his certificate. Dawn looked at him as though he were a fool and said, why would you want to do that? With your strength, you could become a president. Do you know how much authority the president of a department has? Zombie looked confused at Dawn's words. Dawn explained to him, take Violet, the Blade Department's president, for example. She not only commands an army, but can also use tanks, airplanes, and artillery at will, and even has the authority to use nuclear weapons. She even manages a city with a population of 40 million. And even the mayor is under her control. Strictly speaking, she is the true mayor. However, none of this impressed Zombie as he had his own city to govern. Soon, led by Dawn, they arrived at the biotech department. This is the logistics department for the students, and any student who passed the test could come here to choose a weapon. Zombie saw a picture frame on the table with a harmonious family of four, which reminded him of his own family. Dawn explained to him, this was Professor Jamie, the former president of the biotech department, who was fondly known as the logistics minister. However, after his wife died, Professor Jamie became obsessed with using humans and zombies for biological research. But he was dismissed by the academy for going overboard. The academy even issued an order to kill him on sight. Just then, a girl with glasses walked over and asked, did Dawn pass the test? Dawn replied proudly, of course. Dawn then introduced a zombie, 
she's the orphan adopted by Professor Jamie and the acting president of the biotech department. As they were talking, the acting president walked over to her seat and said, come over here. What kind of equipment do you need? Upon hearing this, Dawn immediately stepped forward and said, I need something that can carry more weapons, preferably something that can fit a Gatling gun in my pants. It seems that Dawn is ready to enter the gunner department. What about you? The acting president asked Zombie. However, when she saw Zombie's face, she was frightened and screamed loudly. Dawn quickly explained, Sister, you got it wrong. He's not a zombie, he's just a human wearing a zombie mask. Do you think I'm stupid? Or are your eyes growing out of your ass? He's obviously a zombie. Upon hearing this, Dawn lied and said that she had already seen Zombie's face, which dispelled the acting president's concerns. Alright, I'll trust you this time. What kind of weapons do you need? After some thought, Zombie said, I don't really have anything mined. It's just that whenever I go out, I somehow always end up going home naked. So, maybe a set of clothes that won't rip? Upon hearing this, the acting president was speechless. Meanwhile, inside the dojo of the swordsmanship department, Marshall was kneeling on the ground, looking very embarrassed without any clothes on. On the other side of him, a woman had her leg resting on the table, listening to him recount his defeat. He was super strong. As soon as I charged over, my entire vision turned dark. And the very next second, I was already handing on top of the lamp post. The woman spoke slowly, can your president win against him? I feel like he's even stronger than my president. Upon hearing this, the woman walked up to Marshall and asked, I'm very interested in that guy now. What's his name? This girl is none other than Lan Chi, the president of the sword department. She and Violet, the president of the blade department, belong to the same level and both possess absolute control over a city. They have been long-time rivals and will resort to any means to poach members from each other's department. Because the population of the city managed by the blade department is always one more than that managed by the sword department, Lan Chi, the president of the latter, even wishes she had a twin to surpass the blade department. As Lan Chi walked away, Mashal couldn't help but break out in a cold sweat. Mr. Zombie, I wish you good luck. Meanwhile, in the academy's teaching building, Zombie was taking notes furiously as the teacher explained how to capture zombies. The zombies not only love human flesh but also have a fondness for eggs. By exploiting their weaknesses, we can capture them. Zombie was startled to hear this news. He never thought that humans had such core secrets. Nowadays, ordinary zombies pose no threat to humans. By capturing them and placing a piece of meat in front of them, they can run indefinitely and generate unlimited power for humans. Moreover, by refining them into corpse oil, the humans can also solve the fuel problem in industry. The thought made Zombie work even harder to take notes. Just then, Dawn curiously approached him. What are you doing? Zombie replied without looking up, I want to write down everything the teacher says so that I can tell my family when I go home. Hearing this, Dawn looked puzzled, your family. At that moment, a broadcast came on, all students, please note that the new first-year students should gather in the indoor venue. Shortly afterward, the indoor venue of the academy was crowded with people. Just as Zombie and Dawn were wondering what was happening, Violet, the president of the Blade Department, walked over and said, this is a very important meeting. You all better be quiet. You were introduced by me, so don't cause me any trouble. At the same time, on the other side, Lan Chi stared curiously at Zombie and wondered, is that guy Zombie? He doesn't seem very smart and doesn't appear to be very powerful either. She then prepared to have her subordinates test Zombie's strength. Just then, the door of the indoor venue opened, and a man with several robots walked in. This man was the president of the Mechanical Life Form Department, who also happened to be Grand President of the Academy. Everyone bowed and paid their respects to him. Seeing Zombie standing there stupidly, Don pushed down his head and said, What are you doing? This is the president of the Mechanical Life Form Department, one of the most powerful people in the Academy. As the Grand President walked past Violet, he patted her on the shoulder and said softly, Thanks to you for the last operation, you did a great job. Seeing this scene, Zombie looked puzzled and wondered if something was going on between them. Dawn smirked at him and asked if he was jealous. Zombie replied that he was just asking a casual question. He then asked Dawn if the Grand President was powerful. Dawn explained, Do you remember Professor Jamie I told you about before? 
He was the last batch of people to conduct biological research before he was wanted. Among the tens of thousands of experimental subjects, only he survived. After Professor Jamie was wanted, he founded the Mechanical Life Form Department. His strong power convinced people, and he successfully increased the city's population under his management to 50 million. In the 10 years he governed the city, not a single zombie appeared in his jurisdiction, and he wiped out every single one of them. Hearing this, Zombie was suddenly frightened and broke out in a cold sweat. At that moment, the voice of the Grand President rang out, although all of you are only first-year students, you are all elites from various fields. Now, I have a matter that requires your assistance. With that, he signaled the nearby robot to activate the camera, and the robot's head opened to project an imprisoned figure behind the Grand President. This person is a spy we captured a few days ago. He secretly dropped a nuclear bomb, nearly killing one of our outstanding presidents. Upon seeing the figure, Zombie's anger soared, so it was this guy who bombed me with a nuclear bomb last time. The Grand President continued, normally, such a person would be executed immediately, but according to reliable intelligence, this person is the confidant of the former president of the biotech department. In order to make him reveal the hiding place of Professor Jamie, we have tried various methods, but students from grades 2 to 5 have all failed, even using the rack, needle pricks, and castration, but he still did not budge. You are all talents from different regions, and I declare here that whoever can make him reveal the hiding place of Professor Jamie will be appointed as the vice president. With those words, chaos erupted in the audience. As a first-year student, they couldn't believe they stumbled upon such an opportunity. The students then began to sign up, displaying their unique skills and abilities, some resorted to verbal intimidation, some resorted to offering incense and praying, some resorted to banging drums and gongs, and still, others even recited scriptures. Watching these peculiar actions from the students, Violet felt a wave of dizziness, wondering what kind of talented individuals she had recruited. Two hours later, though students tried every trick in the book, they still could not extract any information from the prisoner, nor could they even make him speak. It was then that Dawn looked towards Zombie and asked, Zombie, can you make him speak? Upon hearing this, Zombie's expression became serious, not only can I make him speak, but I can also make him sing loudly. Dawn's face lit up with excitement upon hearing this, and with the Grand President's approval, Zombie slowly made her way towards the interrogation room, muttering. My subordinates have always been obedient, but they always lose control when they see humans for no reason. I hope this human can explain something. Those who did not understand the truth, like Violet and Dawn, were puzzled by his sudden enthusiasm. But soon after, Zombie walked into the interrogation room, where the man was imprisoned. Upon seeing Zombie, the man snorted and did not even bother to look at him. However, Zombie did not speak. He only stared coldly at the man. The man, seeing this, spoke first, are there no more people in your academy? Sending new recruits like you is useless. I won't betray Brother Fay. In the next moment, Zombie responded with action. His arm quickly sliced across the man's body, leaving a wound on his arm. At first, the man looked at the wound with disdain, even laughing out loud, are you here to joke around? I am not afraid of having my balls crushed, and a mosquito bite would hurt more than your scratch. Could you please use a little more force? It wasn't until Zombie coldly said, stand up, that the man obediently stood up. Watching this scene, Violet and others in the monitoring room were shocked. How did he do it? It turned out that when Zombie scratched the man just now, he had also injected the zombie virus into the man's body. The virus traveled through the man's blood and quickly took control of his brain. The man had now become a second-generation zombie under Zombie's control. Then, Zombie asked the man what his name was. The man answered, My name is Shao Kai. This made everyone in the monitoring room even more shocked. Did he have the ability to control other people's thoughts? Zombie then asked, I heard you're a close subordinate of Professor Jamie. So you must know a lot, right? Yes, I know most of the things. Okay, then tell me, why did the zombies in Y City suddenly lose control? Because Brother Faye sprayed a biological agent over the city. The zombies became violent after smelling the agent. However, we can control these zombies. Brother Faye ordered them to attack humans to get combat data from the Beyonders Academy. Why did you do this? Brother Faye only told me that he was doing something great. 
He ordered us to control the zombies and kill humans, extract combat data from the members of the The Beyonders Academy, but I don't know anything else. Where is Professor Jamie currently located? He is located 500 meters underground in the ruins of the H city. After obtaining Professor Jamie's location, Zombie commanded the man to turn around, and he walked out step by step. In a zombie-like tone, he muttered, you people are really hateful, and I don't want to see you again. Take care of it yourself yourself. The man responded woodenly, understood. As Zombie walked out of the interrogation room, everyone's gaze upon him was filled with fear, causing them to unconsciously step back. The surrounding murmurs were heard, this guy is too twisted, it's terrifying. He can actually control people's thoughts. Listening to the surrounding comments, Violet stared sternly at Zombie, while Lan Chi became even more curious about him. Just then, the Grand President applauded, truly awe-inspiring, first-year students are indeed full of surprises. I promised you the position of Vice President, and I will fulfill my promise. Now come with me to register. Just as Zombie was about to inquire about Professor Jamie, the Grand President interrupted him, no rush, we are also looking for him. Afterward, under the Grand President, they left. Once they departed, Lanchi's subordinates looked puzzled, strange, do we still need to register for the Vice President position? Lanchi was also unsure of what the Grand President was up to, so she decided to follow along and see. Meanwhile, 500 meters underground in a laboratory in H City, the man with glasses turned to Professor Jamie and said, Brother Fay, according to reliable sources, the spy has already confessed, and our location has been exposed. Upon hearing this, Professor Jamie did not answer but instead fell into brief contemplation. After a moment, he said, it doesn't matter if he confess. We will do what we need to do. Let them come. The man with glasses was filled with cold sweat, those people are not to be trifled with. You are taking a great risk. Professor Jamie walked away nonchalantly, our experiment is nearing its end. If they can come, all the better. Let them witness the birth of a new species. In the meantime, Zombie followed the Grand President to an abandoned factory in the outskirts. As he surveyed his surroundings, he asked the Grand President, where are we? Didn't you say you were going to take me to register and then find Professor Jamie? The Grand President stopped in his tracks and said coldly, Zombie, when did you learn to speak human language? Puzzled, Zombie asked, are you talking to me? Just then, the Grand President turned around and aimed his plasma cannon at Zombie, yes, I'm talking about you. With that, he pulled the trigger. Zombie was hit in the head before he could react, and the group following behind him narrowly avoided the blast. That was close. That's the Grand President's speedy cannon. It can instantly reach temperatures of 10,000 degrees and dissolve any substance. As the smoke cleared, the Grand President muttered, they're fools. I'm not. I don't even know what the Academy's security guards are doing. Strange things have infiltrated the Academy, and they don't even know it. The zombie's weakness is in the head. Once the head is removed, they lose all ability to act. I'm sorry, Mr. Zombie, but the Academy is not where you belong. As soon as he finished speaking, Zombie turned into a green light and appeared before him in an instant, slamming him into a wall. The Grand President stared in disbelief, how is this possible? Just then, his accompanying robot came to his aid, and four lasers were fired at Zombie, engulfing him in a fiery explosion. The next moment, a dark figure quickly emerged from the flames and grabbed one of the robot's necks. Taking advantage of this, the Grand President quickly jumped 2,000 meters away. But when he stabilized himself and looked back at the battlefield, he was shocked to see that his robot had been instantly killed, and the headless zombie was coldly holding two robot heads and looking at him. The Grand President standing by was utterly shocked, wondering what in the world was this thing? How could a headless zombie be so strong? Even Lan Chi and her subordinates, who were hiding on the side, were completely bewildered. Just then, Zombie suddenly exerted a burst of energy and appeared next to the Grand President in the next second. However, to his surprise, the Grand President was not slow either. While dodging Zombie's attack, he was still able to counterattack with ease. But despite his efforts, the Grand President's speed was not enough to land a hit on Zombie. The Grand President was now terrified. How could this headless creature be so agile? He didn't have time to think, as Zombie's fist was already swinging towards him like lightning. At the last moment, the Grand President hastily stepped back and retreated dozens of meters away. 
Very good, you are the first zombie that has forced me to use my full strength. I hope this battle won't end too quickly. Hearing this, Lan Chi knew that the Grand President was now taking the fight seriously. Meanwhile, Zombie suddenly underwent a transformation, his head, which had been crushed before, had grown back out of nowhere. Seeing this, both Lan Chi and the Grand President were completely dumbfounded. What kind of creature was this? Zombie spoke up, let's talk, I don't want to hurt you. Feeling the small wound on his neck, the Grand President slowly took off his clothes and said, your plan may have gone awry. I am a robot, and you cannot control me. As soon as he finished speaking, several figures flew towards them in the air. In just a few breaths, those beams of light converged on the Grand President. As the white mist slowly dissipated, a mech-covered robot appeared on the field. Zombie, I hope you can hold on a little longer, because I haven't used my full strength in a long time, the Grand President said. With that, he rushed towards Zombie at an extremely fast speed, kicking him in the chin in an instant. Not only that, but before Zombie even landed, the Grand President flashed below him and landed a heavy punch on his chest, sending Zombie flying into the air for hundreds of meters. The two people watching from the side were completely stunned. Was this the Grand President's true strength? The Grand President quickly flew to Zombie's upper side, and then countless impacts were heard as Zombie was punched in mid-air by the Grand President countless times. When he felt he had had enough, the Grand President flashed in front of Zombie and kicked him to the ground. Just as Zombie landed, the Grand President's chest suddenly lit up with a red energy light. The next second, a powerful shockwave was sent towards the ground, and the terrifying energy shook the surrounding buildings to pieces. The Grand President, who had finally stopped attacking, breathed a sigh of relief and said, he must be dead this time. But as the smoke slowly dissipated, Zombie appeared again, unscathed. The Grand President was completely incredulous at this sight. Suddenly, Zombie yelled towards the sky, and the terrifying force made Lan Chi and her partner, who were hundreds of meters away, almost unable to stand. The Grand President's mech in the field even cracked on the spot. As Zombie slowly stopped howling and turned around, Lan Chi and the other spectator were completely shocked. Because at this point, Zombie had transformed into a completely different form. As soon as Zombie's second form appeared, it triggered countless anomalies in the world. A hurricane began to swirl around him, with Zombie at its center, even affecting the entire city's airspace. Dawn, who saw this scene from afar, was incredulous, while Lan Chi, who was on the battlefield, was too scared to even breathe. Just as everyone was at a loss, Zombie, who was still in the abandoned warehouse, finally spoke up, I told you from the beginning that I didn't want to go to war with humans. Hearing this, the Grand President was stunned, but before he could argue, Zombie suddenly tilted his head and smiled wickedly, so, how do you want to die now? This eerie scene left Lan Chi and the others horrified. Not only had Zombie's appearance changed, but his personality had also undergone a transformation. The two immediately began to try to escape at breakneck speed, as their own lives were at stake. However, the Grand President, who was still on the field, did not consider his own situation at all and even boasted, I've never been afraid of any zombies my whole life. He then challenged the zombie to a fight. Meanwhile, Lan Chi and Dawn had already fled far away and were thinking that they were now safe. Suddenly, a figure flew past them with a loud bang. Seeing this, the two of them were instantly terrified, as the Grand President was actually shattered into pieces by a single punch from zombie. Before they could react, Zombie had already flashed in front of them. The Grand President quickly shouted for his mech, but the robots were blown to pieces by a single bang from Zombie while still in midair. The explosion's shockwave also knocked Lan Chi and Dawn out of the sky. Seeing this, the Grand President urgently yelled at them to help clear the Zombie, but Lan Chi didn't even want to listen, who dares to go up against that thing? The three of them quickly ran away in different directions. However, the Zombie, who saw this scene, didn't move. Instead, he raised his right hand and then plunged it into the ground. The next second, the previously calm new city began to shake, and Lan Chi, who was running away, suddenly froze, as a concrete road suddenly appeared in front of her. Even the grand president next to her was hit by the sudden appearance of the road. It turned out that Zombie had lifted the entire developing new city. Everyone who saw this was confused. What was happening? Was there an earthquake? On the other side, Dawn also couldn't believe what she was seeing. 
This is an uninhabited city. I never thought it could be lifted up. At this moment, Zombie suddenly made a move, and with a loud bang, he quickly rushed towards the Grand President. In an instant, Zombie pressed his hand on the Grand President's forehead, and then he grinned wickedly and said, So, are you scared now? At this point, Zombie smiled with a touch of devilry and said, Although I have no control over the robots, your brain doesn't seem like it's a machine, is it? With that, he used his finger to slice the scalp of the Grand President. In the next moment, countless zombie viruses instantly occupied the Grand President's entire brain. Zombie read some memories from his brain. It was unexpected that the seemingly arrogant president was also a pitiful person. At the age of five, both his parents passed away due to an accident. He was then captured by Professor Jamie for human modification, and it could be said that there was hardly a normal part of him below his head. Seeing this, Zombie couldn't help but pity him and said, Do you think living like this is any better than being a walking dead like us? With that, he released him. Lan Chi below saw what happened and hurriedly rushed over to catch the barely breathing president. At this moment, she was also horrified. She never thought that Zombie had the ability to read other people's memories. Later that night, Zombie hurriedly ran back to his dormitory, thinking to himself as he packed his luggage, why couldn't I control my emotions again? Now I'm exposed. I should run away quickly. However, when he was ready to leave with his luggage, Violet suddenly appeared and stopped him. Zombie was very helpless at this moment. He was clearly a very kind zombie who really disliked killing, but for the sake of his freedom, he turned around and rushed towards Violet. However, at this moment, Violet suddenly displayed a letter of appointment, and said, from today on, you are the vice president of the Abnormal Academy. Zombie was very confused when he heard this, but the appointment letter in front of him didn't seem to be fake. He then instinctively asked, did the grand president personally seal this with his stamp? Also, didn't he tell you anything else? Violet slightly tilted her head and said, the grand president only said that you are a rare talent, without saying much else. At the same time, when Lan Chi learned that the Grand President wanted to keep Zombie, she was shocked. However, the Grand President said, whether he is a zombie or a human is no longer important. The most important thing is that he can help us catch Professor Jamie. He then asked Lan Chi how the arrangements for this matter were going. Upon hearing this, Lan Chi said that everything was prepared and they could leave at any time. Very good. I hope we can successfully catch Professor Jamie this time. The scene then shifted to an abandoned small town where Varmint angrily roared, Our king has been captured by humans, what should we do? Kill the humans and rescue the king. The zombie minions were filled with passion. However, Blackie on the rooftop expressed disdain, How could our king be captured by humans? I think it's just Varmint being idle. After a few peaceful days, a carrier suddenly appeared in a certain sea area. The Grand President stood in the command center and shouted into the microphone, Listen up, everyone. We only have one chance, and we must catch Professor Jamie at any cost. They soon arrived at the ruins where Professor Jamie was hiding. However, Zombie, with Dawn, was wandering around like window shopping. Just then, a group of armed human forces suddenly appeared. When they saw Zombie, they all saluted him, leaving him feeling very confused. At this moment, a captain stepped forward and reported, starting today, the 56th army composed of 120,000 people will only listen to Vice President Zombie's arrangements. Observing the 120,000 humans at his command, Zombie curiously inquired, would you be willing to die for me if I asked? As his voice faded, a soldier immediately pulled out a grenade, shouting, it would be an honor. Zombie was left speechless, wondering if the man was mad. But at that moment, a discordant voice interrupted his thoughts, I don't understand how such an important strategic location is guarded by a weakling. You should hide behind us, lest you cause harm. At this point, Dawn exclaimed, Are you the president and vice president of the Steel Blade Department from the Stainless Steel Academy? Simultaneously, on the aircraft carrier, an armored youth scoffed, Has your academy run out of people? Sending a novice to guard such a vital position. Lan Chi immediately retorted, If you're going to help, help. Don't babble in front of me. The Grand President joined in, saying, Do you believe that this novice could beat you senseless? The Stainless Steel Academy's Grand President scoffed, and informed them that reinforcements were on the way, just wait and watch. Meanwhile, in a control room several kilometers underground, 
someone asked, Brother Fay, they've all entered the city. What should we do? Professor Jamie responded with an evil smile, let's play with them first. Pressing a button on the console, hordes of zombies converged on zombie from all directions. Suddenly, Glass's man noticed something strange among the zombies. It turned out that Varmint wanted to find humans for revenge, and had incited the dead to attack them. But only one arrived the next day, and after handing over gasoline to Varmint, fled at top speed. Before leaving, he claimed he wouldn't dare disobey the king's orders. Varmint was speechless, why not just keep it from the king? These cowardly fools, it's just a few humans. Watch me cut them down. However, curiosity compelled him to sniff the green gas floating in the air. Glass's man was overjoyed seeing this, as he hadn't expected this zombie's data to be so exceptional. He couldn't help but laugh, come on. Show me your strength. Meanwhile, on the surface, the weaker zombies were quickly dispatched. Looking at the bodies, zombie was puzzled, these don't seem to be from my horde. Hearing this, Dawn quickly turned away, feigning ignorance. The president suddenly stepped forward, taunting, you weaklings should go home and not get in the way. But before he could finish, distant roars erupted. Seeing this, Zombie hurriedly asked, Varmint, what are you doing here? Varmint didn't answer, instead downing the gasoline in his hand. Dawn was dumbfounded by the sight, what on earth is this? Suddenly, Varmint pulled the trigger on his chainsaw, and the engine roared to life. At that moment, Varmint mustered his strength and let out a forceful roar. In an instant, the surrounding structures cracked and crumbled. Dawn, who stood directly opposite him, was sent flying through the air. Fortunately, Zombie appeared in time to shield them from the brunt of the attack. With terror etched on her face, Dawn inquired, what on earth is this creature? By now, the entirely uncontrollable varmint was ranting about annihilating all of humanity. The president of the Steel Blade Department, intrigued by these words, remarked, impressive, a formidable zombie at last. However, Zombie grabbed Dawn and sprinted away. Confused, Dawn asked, why are we running? Isn't the president here? Zombie, without looking back, replied, don't be foolish, that creature is indestructible. Hearing this, Dawn was taken aback. Zombie then warned, Varmint possesses a genuine, undying body. Yet, their escape was misinterpreted by the president of the Steel Blade Department as Zombie's fear. Before he could finish his mockery, though, the vice president was sent flying by one of Varmint's punches. Resounding crash, the president finally realized the gravity of the situation and urgently inquired, what's happening? What just occurred? At this point, the vice president was speechless. When the president looked again, Varmint had already materialized before him, and a rapid series of thuds from their ensuing battle echoed throughout the area. Inside the surveillance room, Glass's man gasped, incredible. This creature's combat prowess is off the charts. Meanwhile, the president of the Steel Blade Department was faring poorly. As he contemplated a counterattack, Varmint slapped him, causing him to spin helplessly. Subsequently, the president was kicked hundreds of meters away with a single, powerful blow. Within moments, both the president and vice president had lost their fighting strength. As Varmint reappeared before them, he raised his chainsaw and swung it menacingly. Elsewhere, atop a building, Zombie and the others watched the events unfold leisurely. Panicking, Dawn exclaimed, Oh no, it seems the president of the Steel Blade Department can't hold on much longer. To her surprise, the once arrogant president now cried out for his mother in utter despair. Dawn and her companion exchanged bewildered glances. As Varmint prepared to claim the president's life, the nearby team leader urgently asked, Vice President, what should we do now? Zombie observed Varman's movements, considering that intervening might expose him. He then turned to Dawn and instructed, you go down and fight him. Hearing this, Dawn protested, even the president couldn't defeat that creature, going down there would be like walking into certain death. Zombie, however, ignored her and bit her arm. Dumbstruck, Dawn lamented, it's over, am I going to turn into a zombie now? She then clutched her chest and rebuked him, you wouldn't be harboring any inappropriate thoughts, would you? Speechless, Zombie advised, just remember to go easy when you attack. Fearing the exposure of his identity, Zombie employed his powerful virus to reconfigure and enhance Dawn's genetic makeup. In an instant, she transformed into a formidable fighter. As Varmint was about to defeat the Steel Blade Department's president, 
Don hastily hurled a rock at his forehead. Irritated, Varman turned and roared, who dares to interrupt my affairs? Unruffled, Don stepped forward and challenged, saw Wielder, what satisfaction do you find in bullying the weak? Come, entertain me instead. Varman hesitated, then retorted with a fierce glare, who do you think you are? Worthy of battling me? What, are words your only weapon? I assure you, I can reduce you to tatters in mere moments, Don replied, swiftly producing a customized Gatling gun. In a blink, a barrage of bullets sped towards Varman. Unexpectedly, Varman evaded the onslaught with a casual series of dodges. However, the Steel Blade Department's president behind him was not as fortunate. But for the steel armor he donned, Don's bullets would have claimed his life before Varmint could. Seizing the moment, Don teleported in front of Varmint and leaped into the air, performing a 360-degree aerial spin. As she soared above Varmint's head, she hastily released two high-explosive grenades and shoved them into his mouth. A deafening boom resounded as Varmint was engulfed in flames. But once the smoke dissipated, he emerged and scathed, scoffing, I am immortal, your efforts are futile. Before he could finish, a shotgun blast struck his face. Dawn, grinning wickedly, taunted, not bad, but that was merely a warm-up. Meanwhile, the squad captain inquired curiously, Vice President, what exactly did you do to her? Zombie replied nonchalantly, merely a minor genetic modification. Moreover, this is only the beginning, I can make her even stronger. Back to Varmint, although immortal, he found the relentless barrage unbearable. Dawn, seemingly invigorated, let out a maniacal laugh. Witnessing this, the Steel Blade Department's president and vice president despaired, yearning for the safety of home. Suddenly, Varmint seized the initiative and charged at Dawn, only to be trampled and kicked in the face. The force of her blows sent him hurtling hundreds of meters back. Hoisting a rocket launcher, Dawn roared, you claim to be immortal. Try this on for size. Varmint, disheveled from the beating, noticed nearby gasoline. Desperate, he guzzled an entire barrel. Simultaneously, Dawn's rocket hurtled towards him. With a flash, the projectile split in two. Reinvigorated by the gasoline, Varmint's combat prowess soared, and he managed to bisect Dawn. The Steel Blade Department's president and vice president lamented, it's over, we're doomed. Smirking haughtily, Varmint jeered, I told you I am immortal. Heed my warning in your next life. However, at that moment, Zombie on the rooftop clenched his fist. Miraculously, Dawn's severed body began to mend itself. Varmint gaped in astonishment, never suspecting that Dawn, too, possessed the power of immortality. This is the proper way to wield a Gatling gun. One swift blow, and even Varmint is left bewildered for a moment. It turns out that just recently, Dawn, under the influence of Zombie's super virus modification, not only experienced a significant surge in combat prowess but also gained an undying body similar to Varmint's. Witnessing this spectacle, the two presidents present wish nothing more than to flee home to their mothers. However, the two combatants in the arena seem to grow more invigorated with each clash. Dawn, wearing a wicked grin, roars, impressive, isn't it? Today, I am feeling generous, I shall accompany you to the bitter end. Upon hearing these words, Varmint is left dumbfounded. What is going on? It seems that Dawn appears even more like a zombie than he does. Zombie, who is observing from the rooftop, never expected Dawn's potential to be so immense after undergoing genetic mutation. Yet, her entire skeleton has been shattered, and the pain from being bisected earlier is all too real. The battle must be concluded quickly. Varmint, since you refuse to stay home, do not blame me for using Dawn's hand to thrash you. With Zombie's deliberate manipulation, Dawn's latent potential is once more ignited. In an instant, she appears before Varmint. A thunderous boom resounds as Dawn's fist connects with Varmint's face, sending him flying dozens of meters away. Just then, Dawn reappears behind him and mercilessly smashes the butt of her gun into Varmint's forehead. As the dust settles from the echoing bang, Varmint crawls from the pit only to be met by Dawn in a relentless barrage of blows. At this point, Varmint has no ability to fight back. Anticipating yet another combination attack, he hastily surrenders, promising to return home immediately and never venture out again. Upon hearing this, Zombie's face contorts with embarrassment, while the bespectacled man observing from the control room is equally baffled. Suddenly, Dawn drops her machine gun, and her tense demeanor vanishes in an instant. 
Seizing this opportunity, Barment springs from the pit and lands a surprise punch on Dawn's face. Witnessing this, Zombie exclaims in exasperation, Dawn, what are you doing? You actually believed his lies. Moreover, the moment you let down your guard, you revert to your original state. Dawn, filled with regret, did not anticipate her heightened state to dissipate so easily. Varmint, now brimming with arrogance, sneers, so, you took some stimulants. Now that their effects have worn off, I'd like to see how you meet your end. Zombie, rendered speechless by the scene, realizes that he must take matters into his own hands. The bespectacled man observing from the shadows is thrilled, exclaiming, this zombie is incredibly powerful, even resorting to sneak attacks. He excitedly manipulates his keyboard, intending to have Varmint eliminate them all. As Varmint closes in, just before he can finish off Dawn and the others, the bespectacled man notices another person appearing on the street. Varmint halts his actions as he spots zombie approaching. Just as the bespectacled man anticipates another thrilling showdown, Varmint begins to stammer, unable to articulate a single word. Zombie, with a dark expression, shouts, Varmint, didn't I tell you to stay home? What are you doing here? At these words, everyone present is taken aback. Inside the control room, the bespectacled man is equally astonished, as no matter how he tries to control Varmint, he remains unresponsive. With Zombie's arrival, Varmint's consciousness is instantaneously pulled back to their first encounter centuries ago. Back then, he had assumed Zombie to be a mere fledgling zombie, never expecting that in just a few short years, Zombie would become the supreme leader of the undead realm. The scene returns to the present, where Dawn and the others struggle to comprehend the sight before them. Moments ago, Varmint was brimming with arrogance, but now, he is paralyzed with fear. Upon witnessing this scene, the bespectacled man's face was a picture of disbelief. Without hesitation, he frantically pressed buttons on the control panel, attempting to manipulate Varmint further. However, as Zombie steadily approached, Varmint was so frightened that he dared not even breathe. In a fleeting moment, Varmint's thoughts drifted back to a summer several centuries ago. At that time, he had reigned as the Zombie King, dominating his corner of the world. Yet, when the self-proclaimed Zombie appeared, Varmint initially dismissed him as an ordinary Zombie. Within the next moment, Zombie had grasped Varmint's mouth, declaring, From now on, you are my subordinate. Any objections? Hearing this, Varmint hastily nodded in agreement. Fast forwarding to the present, Varmint remained utterly motionless. Infuriated, the bespectacled man cursed, you possess an immortal body. What on earth are you afraid of? Little did he know, Varmint had once been dismembered and hung from a tree as cured meat for centuries as punishment for his disobedience to zombie. Thus, regardless of the bespectacled man's efforts to control Varmint, his body instinctively resisted. At that moment, the computer controlling the zombies exploded under the bespectacled man's furious button mashing, and Varmint, terrified, fled the scene. The bespectacled man stood dumbfounded, while nearby onlookers were equally baffled. As for Zombie himself, he was utterly perplexed, wondering, does Varmint truly fear me that much? Seeing his plan foiled by Zombie, the bespectacled man seethed with rage. However, as he prepared to continue, a large hand suddenly landed on his shoulder. Let it go, the voice said, these zombies were merely an appetizer. The real show is just beginning. As the words faded, several armed helicopters appeared high above in the sky. It was the president of the Beyonders Academy and his associates who had arrived. Lan Chi asked the traitor, tell me, is your brother Fei hiding below? Yes, they're concealed 1,000 meters underground, spanning an area of over 10,000 square meters, the trader replied. Lan Chi was momentarily taken aback. How on earth are we supposed to search such a vast underground space? Before she could finish, the president of the Stainless Steel Academy unsheathed his sword, proclaiming, just watch my performance. With that, he launched himself from the helicopter like a speeding arrow. Witnessing this, Lan Chi could not help but comment sarcastically, you truly are a reckless man. Unfazed, the Stainless Steel Academy president advanced, brandishing his sword haphazardly. In the next instant, he executed a spiraling descent toward the ground. Within moments, a thunderous boom echoed from the earth below. Incredibly, in just a few short breaths, the Stainless Steel Academy president had created a massive, 100-meter deep crater in the ground. Rendered speechless, Lanchi thought, he's quite the oaf. 
Then, she turned to the Grand President and voiced her concern, with such a commotion, what if there are traps below? The Grand President, however, remained nonchalant, asserting that in the face of absolute power, all traps were meaningless. With that, he too leaped from the helicopter, plunging toward the ground. Upon the arrival of all armed forces in the subterranean lair, a thorough search yielded no suspicious individuals, much to the bewilderment of the Stainless Steel Academy's president and the Grand President. Had Professor Jamie fled? Meanwhile, above ground, Lan Chi could not help but complain, why must we stand guard up here while they descend to apprehend someone? Violet, having no alternative, could only placate her with a resigned reply, their rank is higher than ours, after all. The scene then shifts to a skyscraper, where the bespectacled man asks Brother Fei, all of their forces have entered. What should we do next? Brother Fei adjusts his glasses and states, it's time to show them the greatness of my experiment. Execute Plan A. Simultaneously, in the underground lair, the Stainless Steel Academy's president approaches a cylindrical cultivation chamber and, driven by curiosity, peels off a note affixed to it. The note reads, Behold the Zombie King. Open if you dare. Unable to resist such a challenge, the Stainless Steel Academy's president orders his subordinates to open the chamber. However, the Grand President interjects, our primary objective is capturing someone. Let's not complicate things. Realizing they were not taking the bait, the bespectacled man hastily reports to Brother Fay, they back down. Unperturbed, Brother Fay retrieves a detonator from his pocket and, with the press of a button, initiates a countdown on a remote bomb behind the cultivation chamber. Sensing imminent danger, the Grand President knows it's too late to evade. A powerful explosion erupts, engulfing all the soldiers in flames. Yet, to the President of the Stainless Steel Academy, this explosion barely registers as a scratch. Upon learning that something has emerged from the cultivation chamber, Brother Fei laughs, laughs maniacally, the destruction of humanity begins today. Go forth, my greatest creation, and slaughter all humankind, even me if you must. Back in the underground lair, as the smoke clears, both the Stainless Steel Academy's president and the Grand President are utterly baffled by the sight before them. The so-called Zombie King is nothing more than a helpless zombie infant. The two leaders are dumbstruck by this absurd revelation. As the Stainless Steel Academy's president moves to investigate further, the Grand President warns him, be careful. The more harmless a creature appears, the more dangerous it can be. Undeterred, the president charges forward, slashing at the creature with his blade. The Sea Brother Faley helpless zombie infant evades the attack with an eerie agility. The Grand President exclaims, I knew it would come to this. He then orders a hasty retreat, shouting to the soldiers, withdraw quickly, or we shall all perish. As the soldiers scramble to escape, the Stainless Steel Academy's president, unwilling to admit defeat, scoffs at the notion of a tiny zombie posing any real threat. He launches another ferocious attack, cleaving the zombie in two. As a brother Fay victory, his triumph is short-lived, as the two halves of the zombie mutate into separate entities. Stunned, the president exclaims, what kind of monster is this? At that moment, the two independent zombie infants emit a series of strange utterances, and in another bizarre twist, fuse back together. At that moment, Professor Jamie had already fled to the rooftop. Brother Fay, let's release the zombies while they're still unaware and make our escape amidst the chaos. With that, the bespectacled man unleashed all the zombies within the city. In just an instant, a horde of zombies rushed towards Lan Chi and her team. However, Lan Chi remained composed in the face of this onslaught. As her subordinate prepared to call for reinforcements, she stepped forward and said, there's no need. Stand down. She then approached, removing the hairpin that held her hair in place. With a swift motion, the hairpin transformed into a sharp, gleaming sword. In that moment, Lan Chi wielded the sword with the grace and poise of a legendary heroine. With a whoosh sound, she had already kicked the zombie's chin with one swift motion. Successive thuds echoed as she sent every single one of the undead creatures soaring through the air. Utilizing the springiness of a nearby tree, Lan Chi leapt skyward. The vice president, who witnessed the scene, was astonished to see Lanchi's lightning-fast swordsmanship. In just a few breaths, she landed back on the ground, while the airborne zombies were reduced to mere fragments. The vice president, who had been enjoying his lunch, was left dumbfounded as his plate was now adorned with a top-tier zombie sushi. 
With her arms crossed, Lanchi scoffed, these zombies barely served as a warm-up. Meanwhile, the bespectacled man on the rooftop fumed, frustrated that the newly released zombies were so easily dispatched. If only that chainsaw-wielding zombie were still here, I'd make this meddlesome woman suffer. He proceeded to direct more zombies towards Lan Chi. However, at that moment, two peculiar figures emerged from the alleyway. Unexpectedly, it was Ah Go and Blackie who had arrived on the scene. Blackie approached a zombie and inquired, have you seen the zombie in this picture? The one with the chainsaw. Before he could finish, the wanted poster in his hand was snatched away by the zombie. Speechless, Blackie couldn't help but lament the audacity of this feral creature. Ah Go stepped forward and asked, if we can't find Varmint, will the boss beat us too? Hearing this, Blackie broke out in a cold sweat, hastily reassuring himself, we'll find him. Meanwhile, in the underground lair, the pacifier-sucking zombie reached out and exclaimed, come play with me. The two presidents exchanged bewildered glances, and the stainless steel academy president drew his blade, slashing at the zombie only to have it dodge his every move. In a sudden burst of power, the president cleaved the zombie in two with a single stroke. Yet, astonishingly, the bisected creature bounced around before reassembling itself, seemingly unharmed. Enraged, the president challenged it, stop running and face me in a real battle if you dare. At this, the zombie removed its pacifier, and a bizarre transformation took place. The once diminutive creature now stood as a tall, alluring female zombie. The two presidents gaped in disbelief, wondering, what on earth is this? At that moment, the zombie suddenly addressed them, exclaiming, what's the matter? Come play with me. However, for the president of the Stainless Steel Academy, the presence of a beautiful woman did not hinder the speed at which he drew his sword. Instantly, he unleashed a fierce double-edged slash towards the female zombie. But in the next second, he was dumbfounded, for his domineering strike was effortlessly caught by a simple lift of her hand. No matter how hard he exerted himself, the steel blade refused to advance any further. Witnessing this scene, the president of the Stainless Steel Academy realized he was no match for her and quickly turned to shout, what are you waiting for? Hurry up and help. Upon hearing this, the grand president no longer hid, and with a booming sound, the mech number one made its dazzling appearance. Yet before he could even make a move, he was sent flying by the female zombie's inch punch. The terrifying force pierced straight through a large building, ultimately coincidentally landing in front of Blackie and Ah Go. Seeing the sudden appearance of this human, Go instinctively asked, he seems to be on the verge of death. Should we save him? Blackie hurriedly retorted, are you stupid? We're zombies. Just then, another deafening explosion erupted from the underground dungeon, followed by the Stainless Steel Academy president being sent flying like a cannonball. Violet and Lan Chi hurriedly approached, asking, what happened in the dungeon? Enduring the pain, the Stainless Steel Academy president raised his hand, pointing behind them, see for yourselves. Upon hearing this, the two women swiftly turned around, only to reveal astonished expressions upon recognizing the newcomer. For the alluring female zombie was now leisurely leaning against the railing, yawning, before casting a flirtatious glance at Lan Chi and Violet. Witnessing this bizarre scene, Violet instinctively felt this zombie was no ordinary being, while Lan Chi hastily drew her sword, declaring, we must cooperate and not let her escape. Yet, despite the combined pressure from the two presidents, the enchanting female zombie remained unflustered, even playfully beckoning them with her finger. Meanwhile, on the other side, Zombie and the others were leisurely barbecuing skewers. At this moment, the president of the Steel Blade Club picked up a cup of tea and obsequiously offered, President Zombie, please have some tea. However, before Zombie could even take a sip, a thunderous noise suddenly erupted from the far end of the street. The strange sound left Dawn momentarily bewildered, what's happening over there? Upon hearing this, Zombie promptly stood up and announced, let's go and see what's going on. Can you believe it? The once shapely and alluring female zombie has now transformed into a grotesque, eight-pack of bearing mutant minotaur. Just moments ago, Lan Chi and Violet had prepared to join forces against the female zombie, but instead of retreating, she brazenly charged at them. Lan Chi struck first, hurling her precious sword at the zombie. With a swish, it only managed to leave a small wound on her face. Witnessing this, Violet hastily drew her blade and charged as well. However, within the next second, 
she found herself kicked in the chin by the female zombie. The excruciating pain nearly caused Violet to lose consciousness. The female zombie then spoke, your speed is decent, but your strength is sorely lacking. Infuriated by the remark, Violet performed a 360 degree spin in mid-air before delivering a powerful kick to the zombie's head. Despite the force of the blow, the female zombie remained unscathed. Sensing danger, Violet hastily retreated. As she did, Lan Chi charged forward, brandishing her sword. Countless sword energies swirled around the female zombie, instantly reducing the surrounding buildings to rubble. Yet, the zombie emerged from the onslaught completely unharmed. Meanwhile, the president of the Stainless Steel Academy, despite his own pain, managed to find a secluded spot. He quickly removed his pants and activated the machinery on his back. Soon after, the sound of whirring gears filled the air as he transformed into an armored knight. This was the Stainless Steel Academy's secret weapon, Steel Heart No. 1. The scene returned to Lan Chi and Violet, who continued their intense battle. However, as they prepared to launch their final attack, the female zombie suddenly extended a 2.5 meter long tongue and underwent a series of grotesque mutations. The sight left Lan Chi and Violet dumbfounded. What kind of creature was this? The female zombie slammed her palm into the ground, sending Lan Chi and Violet flying with the force of the ensuing shockwave. In the meantime, the once alluring female zombie had fully transformed into a bizarre, eight pack of bearing mutant minotaur. Fortunately, the newly transformed president of the Stainless Steel Academy arrived to join the fight. The severely wounded Lan Chi and Violet shouted, Retreat! You are no match for her. But the overconfident president ignored their warnings and arrogantly approached the mutant minotaur. Human, I hope you can withstand my attack. Very well, let's settle this with a single blow. No sooner had he spoken than the president and the minotaur zombie exchanged blows. The impact of their fists colliding sent Lan Chi and Violet flying once again. The tremendous explosion caught the attention of Zombie not far away. As the smoke gradually cleared, all that remained of the Stainless Steel Academy president was a half-destroyed shell, while the Minotaur Zombie appeared unharmed. Human, you have lost. Abandon your futile resistance. I am the greatest zombie king in this world, and your demise is inevitable. Little did the Minotaur Zombie know, Zombie was rapidly approaching from a short distance away. Despite facing such a formidable adversary, Lan Chi and Violet never once wavered. However, in the face of absolute power, their efforts were ultimately futile. The Zombie King merely flicked his wrist, and the Stainless Steel Academy president's mech disintegrated instantly, while Lan Chi and Violet were flung into the sky. Fortunately, Zombie appeared in time to rescue them. But before they could react, the Zombie King commanded, attack. Devour them. At his command, countless zombies charged towards Lan Chi and her friends. Upon witnessing this, Zombie was filled with rage. He threw Lan Chi and Violet to the ground and yelled, Are you all blind? Be gone. Hearing this, the zombies were dumbfounded, and in an instant, they ceased their attack. The Zombie King, puzzled, inquired, Who are you? Zombie strode through the horde and asked, you call yourself the Zombie King, so what should I be called? At his words, the countless zombies all prostrated before him. In no time, the entire horde was crushed beneath Zombie's feet. Well, are you speechless at the sight of me? He taunted. The Zombie King grinned, ah, a fellow creature. He then proposed, since there can only be one Zombie King, let's have a contest. With that, he fiercely punched Zombie in the face. But the terrifying blow was met with mockery from Zombie, who asked if the Zombie King had been skipping meals. Hearing this, the Zombie King seated, but before he could react, Zombie's fist had already landed on him. In an instant, the powerful force sent the Zombie King flying tens of kilometers, eventually crashing into an aircraft carrier. Professor Jamie, watching the battle from a rooftop, was dumbstruck. A fearsome creature had emerged from nowhere. On the other side, the Zombie King laughed, interesting. At last, I found a worthy opponent. He then plunged into the ocean and lifted a submarine weighing tens of thousands of tons into the sky. With a deafening explosion, Zombie was engulfed in dust. Meanwhile, atop a building, Blackie was administering emergency treatment to the president. Suddenly, Ah Go tapped his shoulder, look over there. I think I sense the Great King's presence. As he spoke, a figure shot out from the center of the submarine. 
Zombie soared into the sky, and then flung a rope around the zombie king's neck and yanked him violently. The next second, Zombie delivered a savage kick to the zombie king's face, obliterating his features. The zombie king was now thoroughly enraged. He charged to the ground, lifted the submarine once more, and swung it toward Zombie. With a thunderous boom, Zombie was blown thousands of kilometers away, landing on an aircraft carrier. Zombie's eyes turned cold, do you enjoy smashing things? Come on, give it a try if you dare. The Zombie King had not yet grasped the severity of Zombie's words. Meanwhile, upon witnessing the Zombie King's immense power, the Grand President urgently advised, we must evacuate. The creature Professor Jamie created isn't something your great king can handle. Before he could finish, Blackie scoffed, humans, pay close attention. There is no one in this world who can challenge the great king, not even a god. For the great king is invincible. As he spoke, Zombie suddenly appeared before the Zombie King, having teleported from the aircraft carrier. As the Zombie King marveled at Zombie's sudden increase in speed, Zombie's fist brutally slammed into his face. The terrifying force sent the Zombie King hurtling off the earth. Before the Zombie King could catch his breath, an aircraft carrier hurtled towards him at breakneck speed. With a resounding crash, the Zombie King was viciously embedded into the moon's surface. At this moment, Dawn and the others who were spectating from the sidelines were utterly dumbfounded. However, just then, the Zombie King on the moon abruptly exerted its strength. In the next instant, the aircraft carrier rigidly soared toward Earth. Accompanying it was the Zombie King's unbridled fury. Witnessing this spectacle, Zombie leaped into action without hesitation. With a resounding bang, he sped rapidly in pursuit of the Zombie King. Unexpectedly, the Zombie King suddenly burrowed into the interior of the aircraft carrier. It wasted no time wreaking havoc upon the nuclear reactor apparatus. Just as Zombie reached the carrier, a deafening explosion reverberated throughout the entire continent. Dawn and the others, upon seeing this, cried out for help. Yet, as the mushroom cloud gradually dissipated in the sky, Zombie miraculously alighted and scathed upon the battleship. He then began to mockingly utter, such damage is hardly enough to even tickle me. Upon hearing this, the Zombie King was rendered utterly speechless. Consequently, it began to amass all its strength once more. In the next second, its arms rapidly elongated as they lunged toward Zombie. In a mere instant, Zombie was blasted onto the top of a skyscraper. The Zombie King then proposed, since neither of us can best the other, why not join forces to annihilate the world? Meanwhile, the Grand President, upon witnessing the Zombie King's terrifying power, began to advise, we should flee while we can. I know your king is formidable after transforming, but continuing to battle like this is futile. However, before he could finish speaking, Blackie interrupted him, stating, who said our king can only transform once? Upon hearing this, the Grand President's face was a picture of astonishment, as he had not anticipated that Zombie possessed a third form. Who could have imagined that Zombie actually had a third form? With just a lift of his hand, the limbs of the Zombie King were instantly severed. It turns out that just now, the Zombie King said that his strength was comparable to Zombie's, and wanted to cooperate with Zombie to destroy the world, and then split it equally. Upon hearing this, the Grand President's face was shocked, fearing that Zombie would agree to the Zombie King's terms. At this moment, Zombie spoke, only weaklings like you would blabber every day about destroying the world. At this point, Dawn and others in the distance were confused and had no idea what Zombie was talking about. Although the Zombie King was scolded and hated it to the teeth, he dared not rashly make a move. At this time, Zombie's eyes suddenly turned red, it seems that if I don't give you a good lesson, you won't understand. In the next second, Zombie's grayish-brown skin began to fade, revealing the human skin underneath. Then he gathered his strength, and his high-quality clothes instantly shattered, revealing the solid abs underneath. Then he let out a roar to the sky, which confused Violet and the others. In the next second, Zombie transformed into his third form, and he was a handsome guy. Seeing this scene, Dawn and others were full of curses, what the hell is this? Zombie stood on the broken roof, and with just one glance at the Zombie King, the strong oppressive feeling was like a demon, instantly enveloping him. The Zombie King was shocked to see this, what? How is this possible? At the same time, on Blackie's side, 
the Grand President fell silent after seeing Zombie's third form. Suddenly, Ah Go slapped him in the face, wake up, idiot. With that, he lifted the Grand President towards the front. Look carefully, this is our king. Our god. At this point, Zombie had completely shed the Zombie's appearance and was almost the same as a normal human. Looking at Zombie who was becoming more and more human, everyone opened their mouths in disbelief, and the Zombie King couldn't help feeling a surge of jealousy in his heart. Zombie took a step forward, and it immediately started to drizzle. At the same time, the Zombie King finally couldn't stand it anymore and roared. Damn, what are you? Are you human or Zombie? Then he took the lead and attacked Zombie with all his might. However, just as his fist was about to touch Zombie, Zombie looked up at him, and the rain miraculously stopped in the air, as if time had stopped. Zombie merely raised his hand, and the rain began to flow backwards in an instant, the Zombie King was instantly cut off by the rain and his limbs flew out. At the same time, Violet and others also floated weightlessly into the sky, and the fish in the water experienced the feeling of flying for the first time. A few seconds later, Dawn and others fell back to the ground. The Zombie King also lay painfully on the sea surface, looking at Zombie in disbelief. At this point, Zombie looked at him expressionlessly, You ask who I am? I am your father. Watching the huge whale crash straight into the skyscraper, Dawn was terrified and trembling. Violet was so shocked, she was practically stupefied. Is this, is this a power that a zombie could possess? Turns out, Zombie's simple hand gesture had instantly created a massive storm vortex in the sky. Meanwhile, Professor Jamie and Bespectacled Man, who also witnessed this event, were dumbfounded. This had far exceeded their understanding. Bespectacled Man frantically asked, Brother Fay, have you ever seen such a terrifying zombie? The usually calm Professor Jamie was no longer composed, stuttering, no, never. However, even when dismembered, the zombie king refused to admit defeat. He rose up with a flip, shouting, regenerate. The next second, his severed limbs grew back. After his recovery, he arrogantly said to zombie, this is useless. I can't defeat you, but you can't defeat me either. As a zombie king, I have an immortal body. Even if you cut me into countless pieces, I can still regenerate. Hearing this, zombie snorted disdainfully. With a swing of his hand, the Zombie King was uncontrollably pulled towards him. Zombie grabbed him by the neck, looking at the Zombie King in his grip like a toy, his dead fish eyes full of contempt. Do you misunderstand the concept of death? Do you think physical damage is the only way to destroy someone? The Zombie King was taken aback. Just as he was about to retort, Zombie's eyes turned serious. As the Zombie King looked into those pupils, Zombie's memories quickly flooded his mind. In the sky above Earth, several massive aircraft carriers appeared. An alien in a red armor stood on the main ship. At his command, countless armored soldiers rushed towards Earth. This was their sixth attempt to destroy Earth's civilization, but even after more than 1,300 attacks, they still failed. They had met a formidable opponent. Suddenly, a figure appeared on the empty sea. He roared, and all the warships in space were destroyed almost simultaneously. At some point, Zombie had already arrived in outer space. After thousands of battles, he had unlocked his dark form. As the Zombie King screamed in pain, the scene returned to the present. In the Zombie King's mind, a pair of crimson eyes stared at him intently. Soon, the Zombie King stopped struggling, his limbs drooping weakly. At this point, he had been frightened unconscious by Zombie. The showdown between the two Zombie Kings finally drew to a close. In his fourth form, Zombie's eyes, which disdained everything, were deeply imprinted in the Zombie King's mind, causing his consciousness to dissipate and turning him into a soulless shell. In other words, he was scared to death by Zombie. Dawn and the others, who witnessed this scene, were utterly dumbfounded. What on earth just happened? Could it be over just like that? At this point, Zombie, having lost interest in the pathetic Zombie King, casually tossed him off the skyscraper. Watching the Zombie King fall and lie motionless on the ground, the Grand President expressed his confusion, why is he suddenly quiet? Is he brewing some big move? At this time, Blackie on the side explained, don't worry, he probably had his consciousness dissipated from fear of the dark form of the King. 
even gods would shudder a bit under that form. Upon hearing this, the Grand President was shocked, what did you say? He was actually scared to death. That's too outrageous. Meanwhile, Professor Jamie was also dumbfounded, standing still on the spot. The bespectacled man who came to his senses grabbed the professor, ready to make a run for it, now that the defenses of coastal and air are gone, if we don't take the chance to leave now, we won't be able to. Just then, zombies suddenly appeared behind them. Seeing this, the bespectacled man was instantly scared into alertness, hastily pulling the professor away from zombies' location, oh my god, we've never shown our faces, how could you know we exist? In response to his words, Zombie didn't answer, but stared at the professor with his dead fish eyes. Seeing this, the bespectacled man was frightened and sat down on the ground, what on earth do you want? At this moment, Zombie slowly said, I'm giving you two choices now. Are you going to surrender, or do you want to go down and have a couple of drinks with the zombie king you created? You only have one second to decide. After witnessing Zombie's terrifying power, who would dare to be clever again? The bespectacled man immediately knelt down with his underlings and surrendered. Though Professor Jamie was unwilling, he could only accept his fate. After all, even a god wouldn't stand a chance against Zombie's absolute power. So, Professor Jamie, who was originally planned to be executed on the spot, was captured alive by Zombie. After arresting the professor, Zombie sat on the ground in frustration. Dawn and Violet were puzzled. Zombie murmured to himself, transforming like that is really scary, I'm just a kind-hearted zombie. At this point, Violet ordered Dawn to check on Zombie, but Dawn flatly refused out of fear, you saw how terrifying he was after he transformed. Equally frightened, Violet pushed Dawn forward, as long as you complete the task, you can be Zombie's vice president when we get back. Upon hearing this, Dawn plucked up her courage and approached Zombie, Mr. Zombie, are you okay? We should head back. Just then, Zombie suddenly stood up, startling Dawn, what are you doing? Zombie replied innocently, didn't you say we're going back? I'm kind of hungry. Also, I want clothes that won't tear. Relieved that Zombie showed no aggression, Dawn asked, do you remember what you did just now? Zombie said he remembered, but it was a bit blurry. He then sighed, I don't have a sense of time, so I've probably dealt with many strange guys like this before but they were all so weak that I don't remember. Meanwhile, in the convoy escorting Professor Jamie, the arrested professor was laughing in the car. The bespectacled man asked what had happened, and the professor, excited, said, I never imagined there would be a species as powerful as zombie in the world. I must get his cells and create an even stronger species. Mr. Zombie, I'll take your genes. With this, the terrorist incident involving Jamie comes to an end. Zombie's actions have been unanimously approved by the upper echelons. He was officially appointed as the president of the Beyonders Academy, on the same level as Violet and the others, and also holds the management rights of a city. However, the city he manages must reach a population of 10 million within a specified number of years, otherwise he will be stripped of his presidency. When the higher-ups asked him which city he wanted to develop, Zombie scratched his head shyly and chose H-City, where he had previously captured Professor Jamie. The higher-ups were speechless upon hearing this. H-City was a deserted city with no inhabitants. Even if you want to raise chickens, you need eggs. How could he plan to develop a place without a single inhabitant? Despite persuasion, Zombie insisted on H-City, and the higher-ups finally stamped his appointment letter for H-City. At this moment, a blonde girl was furiously irritated, where did the Beyonders Academy get this dumbass? He gave up a good city and insisted on an empty one, how will he develop it? Violet, who was in front of the computer, also felt speechless about Zombie. A few days later, the city hall managed by Zombie was officially completed, and his management army expanded from one to four. From then on, Zombie turned the impossible into possible, creating a historic moment. That day, Zombies of all ages, carrying large and small packages, flooded into H-City, and the human army escorted them. A zombie mother held up her daughter with a smile that had not been seen for a long time, thanks to the king for giving us such a grand new home. Zombie and his followers stood on the rooftop, watching this scene with a lot of emotion. After many years of effort, his dream was finally about to be realized. At this moment, Blackie stepped forward and reported, King, 
as per your request, all the citizens have been moved here. Zombie responded with a good, then shouted attention. In an instant, all the soldiers stood in attention, scaring a little zombie next to them, Mom, they won't hit us with smoking metal sticks, will they? Hearing this, a soldier loudly reassured, President Zombie's order is God's order, and his citizens are our citizens. We will safely escort you to your new home. Hearing this, the little zombie looked at the soldier with a strange expression. Seeing this scene, all the followers were genuinely happy, and Fur couldn't help shouting, Great, we finally have a city of our own. Zombie paused, feeling a bit emotional, sometimes, the continuation of a race doesn't necessarily rely on war. At this moment, Blackie suddenly thought of something, by the way, King, what do you plan to do with Varmint? He has been hanging there for several months. Hearing this, Zombie waved his hand, let him hang, it's fine. It turned out that Varmint, a missing person, had been hanging on the roof of the administrative building for several months. During this time, he was tearful all day long, regretting his past actions, King, please spare me. I don't want to turn into Zombie Jerky. I'll be obedient next time. Just as Zombie was helping the citizens move in, Violet on the other side was sent flying with a single punch. With a boom, the wall behind her instantly turned into dust. When she struggled to get up and look at what was in front of her, her face was full of disbelief. How, how is this possible? At this moment, Dawn looked at her playfully. She had actually activated her zombie form on her own. Seeing Dawn in front of her, who seemed like a completely different person from before, Violet was utterly astonished. At that moment, Dawn taunted, Violet, our senior, the battle has just begun. Upon hearing this, Violet snorted coldly, no longer hiding her true strength, and disappeared instantly. When she reappeared, she was already behind Dawn. But just as she prepared to attack, Dawn's head suddenly spun 360 degrees, laughing heartily at Violet. Violet, startled by this scene, involuntarily let out a curse, hastily dropping her knife and jumping backward. Holy crap, can a human even do that? But just then, she suddenly widened her eyes. Dawn had raised a Gatling gun, spun around, and the ground beneath her shattered. She then started firing relentlessly at Violet, who did several backflips to increase the distance between them. Seeing this, Dawn laughed loudly, Senior Violet, can I be the president now? Violet, who was dodging bullets, had no time to respond. Seeing this, Dawn started pulling the trigger even more crazily, shell casings falling to the ground like rain. After a while, Violet managed to retrieve her dropped knife with several swift moves. She snorted coldly, if you want to be president, show me all your strength now. With that, she launched herself at Dawn like a cannonball. Hearing this, Dawn roared, her body cells transforming instantly. Just then, Violet used a horizontal slash, jumped over Dawn, and tried to cut her Gatling gun into scrap metal. Seeing Violet holding back, Dawn teased, Senior, you're not even trying to cut me, how am I supposed to use my full power? Hearing this, Violet instantly got serious and closed in on Dawn. She swung her blade, instantly splitting Dawn's body in half. Violet thought she had accidentally killed Dawn and was nervous, she, she could have dodged, why didn't she? But the next moment, Dawn started laughing loudly, her sliced body healing instantly. Seeing this, Violet was shocked, what the hell is this? After a while, Dawn's body was back to normal, Violet quickly jumped back to create some distance again. This is too much, what the hell did Zombie do? At this point, Dawn asked Violet again, Senior Violet, how about now? Can I be the president now? As soon as her words fell, she was already in front of Violet. Violet was punched into the wall again, and Dawn was again in front of her. At this point, Violet, who had no way out, chose to surrender. As white mist rose from Dawn's body, she transformed back into her normal human form. At this point, she looked worriedly at Violet, apologizing repeatedly. Violet asked sternly, after being bitten by zombie, did you turn into a zombie? Dawn stated that she had a full body checkup yesterday, and all her cells were normal, and even her genetic chain had not changed. Hearing this, Violet was puzzled, then what's with your 360 degree head turn and recovering from being chopped in half? Hearing this, Dawn also didn't know what was going on. She just felt that she could change whenever she wanted, and there was no discomfort. 
And if she was feeling low, a couple of shots of stimulant could make her even stronger, without any side effects. Hearing this answer, Violet was momentarily left speechless. Then she pushed Dawn away and prepared to find Zombie. Seeing the situation, Dawn asked her worriedly, what's wrong? All she left behind was a brief mind your own business before she quickly ran outside. At this moment, the assistant waiting outside stopped her and asked, where are you going? I'm going to City H, she answered, then promptly boarded her private jet in a rush. Soon, the plane took off toward City H and arrived at the destination in less than half an hour. As soon as the plane landed, Violet left the assistant behind and immediately ran toward Zombie's City Hall. Meanwhile, inside the City Hall of Zombie, he was holding a meeting, assigning roles to his fellows. One was appointed as the district head of Qinghua, another as the police chief, and others as heads of civil affairs and industry and commerce. As for Blackie, upon hearing his name, he stood up straight. Zombie handed the document in his hand to Blackie, saying, you'll be the head of the finance department. From now on, you'll be in charge of our money. Just then, Violet burst into the room. She was sweating profusely and panting heavily. Seeing her, Zombie immediately smiled and said, so it's Violet. Do you have any instructions? I was just about to go find you to report on the situation. But Violet didn't answer him. Instead, she quickly ran towards him, grabbed his head, and shouted, open your mouth. Then she pressed his front teeth onto her arm. After that, she walked straight outside, leaving everyone in the room dumbfounded. When Violet left the building, the assistant ran over with the briefcase. But when he saw the bite marks on Violet's arm, he was instantly worried, fearing that Zombie had controlled her thoughts and made her do something indescribable. Upon hearing this, Violet definitively stated, with this power of immortality, I'll do whatever he wants, even if it means I have to strip dance in the square. Upon hearing their conversation, Zombie felt completely baffled. After assigning roles to his fellows, Zombie's city began to gradually get back on track. Not only did they open a zombie clothing store and a zombie barber shop, but they even started offering zombie domestic services and zombie real estate. Incredibly, there were even zombie driving license tests, and the whole city became a paradise for zombies. Zombie also started to enjoy a brief, comfortable life. At this moment, in an office, a blonde girl was looking at Zombie's information and said, I really don't know what the Beyonders Academy was thinking, letting such a weak and characterless person be the president. At this time, a subordinate interjected, Inspector Chen, I heard from the Grand President of the Stainless Steel Academy that this zombie is indeed a real zombie, but I'm not sure if it's true. Upon hearing this, Inspector Chen said, the academies often slander each other, it's nothing new. But I don't like this zombie. As a president, he has no personality. Then, Inspector Chen grabbed Zombie's information, as for whether the Stainless Steel Academy president's claim that he's a zombie is true, we can go to City H and test him to find out. Meanwhile, the Beyonders Academy made a significant discovery in the Arctic. The president of the Archaeological Society, Dr. Strange, flew straight to the site via helicopter. Upon landing on a massive icebreaker ship, he hurriedly headed to the site. He learned from the person in charge that they unexpectedly found a mummified body of an ancient human frozen for a thousand years, 500 meters deep in the ice while conducting a scientific survey. Hearing that it was an ancient human, Dr. Strange immediately got excited. If this was true, it would be one of the greatest discoveries in human civilization. Upon arriving at the site, he saw a crane slowly lifting a block of ice under the direction of the workers. Dr. Strange lit a cigarette, murmuring, I hope this will help our research on ancient history. The experienced president of the archaeological society felt nervous for the first time in his life. As the crane slowly lifted, the ice block was hoisted out completely. Inside was a withered mummy. As the camera panned out, it turned out to be a female mummy, with nothing covering her body. Seeing this, Dr. Strange was speechless, how could the mummy be like this? Just then, two men slowly approached from behind. Suddenly, one of them covered the person in charge's mouth and bit his carotid artery. Seeing this, Dr. Strange asked in horror, who are you? What do you want to do? All he got in response were the screams of the people on the ship. Moments later, Dr. Strange was kicked to the ground. One of them coldly said, 
use him for the sacrifice. Hearing this, two men pressed him to the ground, and his terrified screams echoed. A girl mocked, it's just drawing some blood, no need to squeal like a pig. Another man, who clearly wasn't human, was staring seriously at the ice block. After placing the ice block on the ground, he directly injected Dr. Strange's blood into the female corpse. The corpse magically melted the ice and restored its full form in the blink of an eye. The girl kindly draped a cloak over her. Everyone then knelt in front of her, shouting, Long live the Ghost Queen. May the Ghost Queen stay forever young. And this so-called Ghost Queen was a mature beauty with an unparalleled face. The woman asked grimly, I only have one question, is that dumbass name Zombie from a thousand years ago still alive? Upon hearing the name Zombie, the subordinates immediately felt a touch of unease. When the subordinate came to his senses, he was drenched in sweat. He hastily replied, Queen, since Zombie's last great battle with the humans, he has now mingled with the humans and even established his own group. Upon hearing this, the Ghost Queen shuddered unconsciously. Seeing this, the subordinate quickly steadied her, only to see her eyes become sharp in an instant, Zombie, I will not lose to you this time. Meanwhile, Zombie, completely unaware of the events in the Arctic, was enjoying life with great satisfaction. A few days later, in the capital of the Headquarter Academy in Guangzhou Province, all the heads of the academies had gathered. In front of them, in a lab, a man was roaring wildly. Violet and the others looked at the man whose face was filled with shock, what is this thing? We've never seen it before. It doesn't look like a zombie either. The man now going wild was the leader of the archaeological team who had been bitten before. Being an ordinary human, he had suddenly become very powerful, injuring two academy presidents during his capture. Violet instantly thought of zombie who could also make ordinary people stronger, it seems we have to call in the professionals. Soon, a car stopped in front of the main entrance. As the car door opened, Zombie's shining head stood out. As Zombie got out of the car, all the soldiers shouted in unison, Greetings, President Zombie. This made Zombie feel a bit embarrassed. Soon, under the guidance of a soldier, Zombie entered the building. The presidents of the various academies looked at him with disdain. At this moment, a man proactively greeted Zombie, Hello. I am presidenting from the Iron Club Academy, I heard that you caught Professor Jamie. Seeing this, Zombie also warmly greeted President Ng. After exchanging a few pleasantries, Zombie headed towards the laboratory. Zombie was thrilled to shake hands with a human for the first time, but at this moment, President Ng showed a look of contempt on his face, what a piece of garbage, he's just another sidekick. Someone sneered, look at him, like a chicken. How could the Beyonders Academy choose him as president? Upon hearing this, the Grand President of the Stainless Steel Academy snuck away quietly, a bunch of lifeless things, why did they invite him over? He then hid in a corner shivering, if I had known, would have stayed at home. Before long, Zombie reached the laboratory. The lab technicians asked him to identify the species. Upon hearing this, Zombie was dumbfounded, I don't even know how old I am, you want me to look at this? But when he saw the bite marks on the man's neck, it seemed like he had an idea. Seeing Zombie's expression, Violet and the others felt uneasy. But just then, the man suddenly turned his head to bite Zombie. However, the next second, he shivered all over. At this moment, Zombie turned dark instantly, revealing a mouthful of big white teeth, interesting, it's a blood race. The next second, he burst out with a strong aura, and the lab exploded instantly. The presidents of the academies were blown away. The man turned into a blood race was scared to the point of trembling, with tears streaming down his face. Zombie looked at him and said coldly, I remember you guys were supposed to be extinct. Meanwhile, outside the lab, the presidenting who had previously mocked Zombie bumped hard into a pillar. Only the president of the stainless steel academy who hid in the corner, shaking with fear, murmured, I told you guys, you're courting death. The President Ng, looking at the laboratory with shocked faces, then asked Violet and the others, what just happened with President Zombie? He exploded out of nowhere. What the hell is going on? Violet and Dawn, who knew the truth, could only pretend they hadn't heard. At that moment, Zombie was staring at a trembling vampire man on the bed, interesting, I thought I wiped you all out. But this is even better. He grabbed the man's neck, 
his face full of excitement, tell me, where is Little Red, who loves to drug me? The man, terrified and in tears, pleaded, I really don't know anything. I just turned into a vampire a few days ago after being bitten. Not getting the information he wanted, Zombie transformed back into his original form. Seeing Zombie come out of the lab, Violet and others immediately went up to ask him if he found anything. Zombie cautioned them, be careful these next few days, it's best if you don't go out. Hearing him say this, Violet and her team immediately became nervous, what do you mean by blood tribe? Hearing the word blood tribe, Zombie's face immediately became serious, standing still. Seeing his expression, Violet and others felt something was wrong. But the next moment, Zombie scratched his head, embarrassed, sorry, I can't remember. Upon hearing this, everyone was dumbfounded, followed by Violet's angry roar in the room, can your brain work properly when you transform? Zombie gave an embarrassed apology to Violet, promising to remember next time. Meanwhile, the President Ng and his team whispered, he is really a sidekick. But their words were heard by Zombie. When he turned his head to look at them, they were immediately scared into a cold sweat, not daring to meet Zombie's gaze. At the same time, next to a grand building and in a small alley filled with spider webs, the Ghost Queen, Little Red, was squatting in the corner, looking gloomy as she avoided the rain. Just then, a coin rolled towards them. It turned out that a passerby took them for beggars. Seeing the $1 coin, Lon Ling's eyes sparkled as he picked it up. Little Red felt humiliated and knocked her subordinate away, you guys are in such a miserable state, why did you wake me up? Hearing this, the girl next to him looked wrong, your majesty, do you know what we've been through these past thousand years? When you fought zombie, you were turned into a mummy and sealed in the North Pole. Afterward, he wiped out our clan. Lon Ling and I pretended to be dead on the ground to avoid his death hand. To avoid zombie, we didn't dare to show our faces for a thousand years, whether we saw zombies or humans, we had to take a detour. We've been hiding in this alley for who knows how many years. Look at Lon Ling, he's almost becoming a fool. After hearing her words, Litter Red was so angry that she gnashed her teeth. She didn't expect her subordinates to be so miserable. But then, she helplessly said, even if you wake me up, it won't change anything. I can't beat Zombie now, I'm not even qualified to haircut him. At this time, Lon Ling said, your majesty, you're wrong. The reason we woke you up is because we recently got some information. We found someone who can make you invincible. After saying that, he began to fumble for something in his arms. The girl next to him also said, that person can indeed make you stronger. On hearing this, Little Red immediately became interested, who is this person? And the person whom Lon Ling and the girl were talking about was none other than Professor Jamie, the creator of the new Zombie King, who had just been thrown into the dungeon by Zombie. However, as soon as they saw where Professor Jamie was being detained, they were instantly shocked by the sight. Right after Zombie walked out of the lab, completely forgetting what just happened, he was led by Violet and President Ng to the control room where they were holding Professor Jamie. At that moment, Zombie couldn't help but voice his doubt, why not just get rid of him? Violet explained, he's planted many spies around us that we need to root out. Also, we need to find and destroy all his anti-human research materials. Zombie raised another question, what if he escapes? Wouldn't all our efforts have been in vain? Hearing this, President Ng, as if he had heard a great joke, assured, he absolutely can't escape. Since you, President Zombie, caught him, I'll make an exception and take you to see the place. Soon, they took a helicopter to the private prison specifically built for Professor Jamie. This prison was dug into a mountain, going 3,000 meters deep. Even taking an elevator to the bottom took 30 minutes. With 1,500 levels and at least 100,000 troops, each level was equipped with heavy weapons like anti-aircraft guns and laser cannons, and every 100 levels, a president took turns guarding. With a proud face, President Ng said, what can he use to escape with this level of defense? And what's behind them is not some decoration, it's a giant bomb with 10,000 tons of TNT. If anyone tries to break out, it will explode instantly. Then, showing his big white teeth, he viciously added, if he dares to escape, we'll all die together. Even if God comes, he can only take away a corpse. Seeing such a crazy move by humans, 
Zombie was sweating with fear and quickly excused himself to escape from the underground fortress. Meanwhile, in the alley where Litter Red and others were, the vampire hacker successfully hacked into the prison's cameras. But when they learned about the massive deployment of troops and the dangerous bomb, all three were dumbfounded. Subsequently, Litter Red started cursing, these damn humans, they're utterly disgusting. The scene shifts back to the prison. President Ng lights a cigarette, reminding Violet, forgot to tell you, Inspector Chen has gone to inspect Zombie City. You'd better let your boyfriend know. Hearing this, Violet retorted irritably, get lost, you're his boyfriend, why are you telling me this? President Ng turned around and murmured, it was the Grand President of the Stainless Steel Academy who informed Inspector Chen that this person, Zombie, is actually a true zombie and has built a city of the dead. As for me, whether his name is Zombie or whether he is a zombie, it doesn't matter. What I recognize is strength alone. At that time, in the human city, with everyone's eyes on him and unaware of the approaching danger, Zombie was walking down the street with a smile, the human city is so prosperous, I want to make my city just as lively. The devious Professor Jamie was secretly plotting to scheme again, scheming to use the corpse of the deceased Zombie King as a vessel for Zombie's potent genes. Earlier, Zombie, accompanied by Violet, had paid a visit to Professor Jamie's clandestine prison. Horrified by the inhumane operations, Zombie hastily excused himself under the guise of pressing matters and fled from the underground fortress in sheer panic. As he watched Zombie's retreating figure, bespectacled man wept inconsolably. He could never have envisioned that Zombie, this devil, would happen upon this place. Meanwhile, Professor Jamie, revealing a mouthful of gleaming white teeth, declared, Zombie, I must acquire your gene. Upon hearing this, the bespectacled man retorted, Brother Fay, what are you talking about? We're on the brink of execution. <laughs> Professor Jamie merely smiled in response, confident in the knowledge that the presidents wouldn't execute them until they had secured all research data. He had preemptively arranged for the information to be hidden before the war's onset, and even he didn't know its whereabouts. His face turned stern and said, I'll make these fools regret sparing my life. However, bespectacled man remained anxious. Zombie is immensely powerful. Studying an individual stronger than him is an enormous challenge. Professor Jamie, exuding confidence, responded, as long as a suitable body is available to house the zombie's genes, I can complete the research swiftly. Bespectacled man sniffled and voiced another concern, forget about research for now. As ordinary people, we'll be fortunate just to escape from here. Professor Jamie maintained his composure in the face of this comment. At that very moment, a deliverer man within the prison wheeled a dining table over. After a staff member clad in a white suit inspected it, a food delivery robot advanced towards Professor Jamie and extended an arm to feed him. Not only did Professor Jamie not resist, he began to savor the food slowly, an expression of pleasure on his face. Bespectacled man was somewhat taken aback seeing Professor Jamie still having the appetite to eat under such circumstances. What he was unaware of was the miniature communicator in the food that was now lodged in Professor Jamie's teeth. The doctor then inquired, where is the corpse of the zombie king being kept currently? At that moment, the man in the white suit stood outside the door, a communicator attached to his collar. Doctor, the zombie king's corpse is in the mountain laboratory on the 200th floor, under the guard of two grand presidents, he reported. Professor Jamie sneered, the vessel is there, all we need now are zombies' genes. Elsewhere, zombies roamed aimlessly on the streets. Suddenly, Violet's phone rang. It was a tip-off from the Grand President of the Stainless Steel Academy to Inspector Chen that Zombie was a zombie who had constructed a zombie city. Upon hearing this news, Inspector Chen immediately decided to head to H-City to investigate the situation. Upon hearing about this, Violet was quick to call Zombie. Zombie, this woman is not one to be trifled with, if she confirms these allegations, she won't hesitate to strip you of your presidential title. Zombie broke out in a cold sweat upon hearing this. But, I'm actually human. He started, but was cut off by Violet's growl from the other end of the line. Don't pretend with me. I know what's going on in your city. You can't fool me. With that, she hung up. Zombie was now in full-blown panic mode. This is a disaster. I've only just assumed the presidency a few days ago. No, no, my citizens have barely had a couple of days of peace. 
As Zombie was caught up in his worries, a cosmetic store on the street suddenly caught his eye. Meanwhile, at the capital airport of Guangzhou province, Inspector Chen disembarked from the car and prepared to board a flight to H-City. That spineless man doesn't deserve to be president. I will definitely find a reason to fire this zombie person. Meanwhile, in front of Zombie's city hall, a number of buses appeared as if from the sky, filling the entire plaza. As Blackie puzzled over this, Zombie descended from nowhere, appearing in front of the buses. Blackie, rushing over to Zombie, asked what was happening. Zombie explained, Inspector Chen is coming to inspect our city. You need to quickly have the citizens disguise themselves. If she discovers that we're zombies, she will reclaim our city. On hearing this, Blackie sprung into action, calling out to everyone, get moving, everyone. Go and tell the rest of the zombie citizens, if they don't want to go back to living under the bridge, they need to maintain a human-like facial expression. With that, each official took charge of a bus, flying off to their respective areas. The city of H was buzzing with activity. While the officials were distributing makeup, Blackie didn't waste any time and started applying his own. Ah Go, holding a lipstick, asked uncertainly, will this really work? Blackie responded, we'll just have to try. The king must have his reasons. Meanwhile, on the various streets of H City, volunteers were loudly calling out, under HTE order of his majesty, if you don't want to go back to living under a bridge, come over here and claim a set. Eeri Zombie has a share. On hearing the calls, nearby mothers with children rushed over and immediately started applying makeup at the makeshift booths. But when a little boy saw his mom's makeover, his eyes almost popped out in shock. The mother, apart from her arm color differing from humans, looked just like a normal human being, and a stunningly beautiful young woman at that. When A Lang and Fur returned after distributing the makeup, A Lang was taken aback by the sight of Blackie and Ah Go. Blackie looked just like a white collar worker, while Ah Go had simply slapped on some lipstick. But A Lang, who was a pet to begin with, and Fur had no choice, no amount of makeup could make them look human. So they could only end up as two pitiful watchdogs, being led by Blackie to greet Inspector Chen. However, just as they arrived at the airport, Inspector Chen and her entourage had already arrived in H City by train. She suspected that the news of the inspection had been leaked. In order to more easily uncover any misdoings by Zombie, they had set off early, planning to start their investigation from the common folk. At this point, one of her subordinates muttered, Do you know why Inspector Chen dislikes Zombie? On hearing this, another person said, Have you ever seen Inspector Chen look favorably on anyone? She is biased against everyone except the Lord Overseer. Hearing their conversation, Inspector Chen turned her head and said, I've heard everything you said. What's wrong with me having a bias? Ever since the Overseer delegated his authority away, it seems any Tom, Dick or Harry can be a president. In my eyes, only though the Lord Overseer is truly formidable. Only someone with that kind of domineering and egotistical aura can be a leader, and only he can lead humanity towards a prosperous future. Meanwhile, Zombie, oblivious to the fact that Inspector Chen had arrived early, was blissfully enjoying a donut. As Inspector Chen had already commenced the investigation with his two subordinates, they were still debating whether the Lord Overseer's expedition would return soon. Meanwhile, Blackie and his companions at the airport were waiting in vain. They had no choice, it was the price of dealing with high-ranking officials. The scene transitions to Inspector Chen and her team. One subordinate spots a nearby store and decides to buy a pack of cigarettes. However, upon entering, he finds only egg-based food. When he inquires, the owner feigns ignorance, claiming to be deaf and mute, unable to see, or hear anything. The subordinate wonders, how can a deaf-mute person speak? Outside, another subordinate questions a passerby, asking if President Zombie has ever oppressed the citizens. Upon hearing this, the citizen patted his chest and said, Our great king treats us well. He not only provides us with shelter but also gives us free eggs to eat every month. As the subordinate prepares to ask more questions, the citizen's arm suddenly falls off. The spectacle leaves a bespectacled man aghast, Young man, how did your arm fall off? Unfazed, the citizen swiftly picks up his arm and departs, That's a prosthetic limb, don't worry about it. My mom is calling me home for dinner, so I have to go. Goodbye. Everyone is left in a state of shock. After a while, Inspector Chen, exasperated, stomped his foot, 
what a bunch of psychopaths. I never thought there'd be humans as foolish as zombies. Could this scoundrel zombie have built a city full of lunatics? Angrily, she declared she would have her subordinates record all these incidents as reasons for ousting zombie. Meanwhile, zombie was upstairs, chuckling to himself. The soldiers nearby were too terrified to approach. Ah go asked what happened. The soldier replied, I'm not sure, but after President Zombie finished his meal, he's been talking nonsense and his body hasn't stopped shaking. Hearing this, Ah go had a bad feeling. He grabbed the soldier's collar and demanded to know what they had fed the boss. Startled, the soldier quickly explained that President Zombie had said he was hungry, so he had prepared scrambled eggs with chili for him. Upon hearing this, Ah go panicked, oh no, the king can't eat that. It's like a stimulant to him. Once he eats it, he'll go berserk for a whole month. He immediately called Blackie. When Blackie heard the news, he was also perplexed. He had hidden all the chili peppers, so how were they found? Unable to do anything about the situation, he could only pray. At this moment, Ah Gan asked Blackie, the king won't harm Inspector Chen, will he? Blackie was equally uncertain. Meanwhile, at Inspector Chen's location, they were preparing to move to another place for further investigation when suddenly a large truck came hurling towards them. With a loud crash, it embedded itself in the ground, catapulting several of them into the air. Just as they were unsure of what had happened, another crash sounded. Zombie appeared, stomping the truck into a mangled heap of metal. He turned to Inspector Chen with a mischievous grin and said, So, shall I take you on a tour next? Responding with alarm, Inspector Chen asked, Who are you? Zombie replied with a teasing smile, Oh, have you forgotten me so quickly? I am the zombie you've been looking for. At this, several people reacted with disbelief, You're zombie. I don't recall you looking like this. As he spoke, Zombie hopped off the bus, stating, The person you see now is me, unmasked. He then strode toward Inspector Chen, causing him to retreat a few steps unconsciously. Inspector Chen, you've come a long way, so I've brought some welcoming gifts. With a snap of his fingers, numerous citizens presented their offerings. These are fine canned chili eggs. Remember to take them when you return. And don't worry, we don't eat people. Inspector Chen stood with a shocked expression on her face as Zombie casually lifted her like a small chicken, looking off into the distance. There's nothing to see here. I'll take you somewhere exciting. With that, he leapt into the air, carrying Inspector Chen to an altitude of 10,000 meters. Two of her subordinates were stunned. My god, how can he jump so high? One exclaimed, while the other hailed a taxi, saying, enough with your astonishment. Let's hurry and follow him. Simultaneously, Xiao He and the others also spotted Zombie and quickly sped off in his direction. At this moment, Inspector Chen could hardly maintain the confidence she exhibited upon arrival, all that remained were her screams. Soon, Zombie guided her to land atop a tall building, forcing her to look out across the cityscape. Take a good look. This is the city I manage, spanning over 2 million square kilometers. At this moment, Inspector Chen had no interest in looking at the city, all she wanted was for Zombie to let her go. But Zombie continued, here, we have listed companies, high-ranking white-collar workers, an active construction industry, and new districts preparing for expansion. We have all sorts of occupations, and it's no exaggeration to say that we generate nearly $100 billion in tax revenue for Guangzhou province. With that, he leapt from the building. Inspector Chen screamed in terror, Zombie, I understand, please let me down. But Zombie ignored her, let's discuss law and order after revenue. We always follow traffic laws, and no one breaks the rules. Just as he finished speaking, a bus hurtled toward him due to brake failure. Without missing a beat, Zombie kicked the bus, saying, if there ever is someone who breaks the rules, he said, they get kicked out, literally. As the bus soared upward a hundred stories, Inspector Chen's subordinates' jaws dropped in shock. Fortunately, Blackie arrived just in time to rescue the citizens. Unaware of this, Inspector Chen shouted, You. You just killed someone, do you understand? Zombie snorted dismissively, killing. Impossible. My men are competent, they won't let any citizen die in vain. Seeing Inspector Chen's team rushing over, Zombie casually tossed Chen into the arms of her subordinates. With that, he turned and walked away, I know why you're here. You're free to leave today. 
Even if you strip me of my presidency next, I assure you, I, zombie, will rule this city. Anyone who dares stand in my way will face the consequences. Upon hearing this, the two subordinates were stunned, their mouths agape in shock. The scene immediately fell so silent that one could have heard a pin drop. A moment later, one subordinate, trembling, whispered, should we perhaps retreat for now? Is this? Is this really the kind of pressure a human being should exert? Compared to the Lord Overseer, the zombie standing before us seems even more formidable. He hardly seems human at all. Who was the fool who previously called him timid and cowardly? I now want nothing more than to rush back and strangle that imbecile. Seeing their fearful demeanor, zombie turned to leave, leave before I change my mind. I won't be responsible for your meals. But at that moment, Inspector Chin spoke up, calling out to zombie, zombie, you've performed admirably. I acknowledge your ability to govern the city. But as a president, not only must you possess the ability to manage the city, but also the strength to defend it. At these words, Blackie and the others were visibly taken aback. Unperturbed, Inspector Chen continued, Zombie, you have yet to demonstrate to me today that you possess the power to safeguard the city. But before she could finish her sentence, Zombie's subordinates swiftly closed in on her. Ah Go even went so far as to cover her mouth. Subsequently, they glanced at Zombie with fright etched across their faces, only to find his back turned to them, making it impossible to discern his reaction. In the following moment, Zombie turned around, an evil smile playing on his lips, what, you wish to witness my true power? Very well, I'll grant your wish. Hearing this, Zombie's underlings couldn't help but shudder, Inspector Chen is courting death. She better not drag us into this. As they gazed up at the clear sky, they knew a storm was brewing. Before long, Zombie led Inspector Chen and the others to the seashore. The faces of Blackie and the rest were fraught with anxiety. At that moment, Inspector Chen approached Zombie and questioned, Zombie, what are you implying? Why have you brought us here? But catching a glimpse of Zombie's devilish reflection in the water, she swallowed his next words. At that moment, Ah Go, who was perspiring nervously at the side, cautioned, whatever happens next, you're on your own. We have no part in this. As Inspector Chen wore a puzzled expression, not comprehending Zombie's intentions, her subordinates suddenly noticed that a stone had started to levitate. What's going on? How did the stone start to float? In the following moment, Zombie tightly shut his eyes. When he reopened them, he had activated his third form. The three onlookers were instantaneously taken aback by the spectacle. What the, what's happening to him? At this moment, Zombie spoke quietly, don't you want to witness my power? Watch closely then. As his words echoed, the tumultuous sea calmed abruptly, the airborne rocks paused mid-flight. A chill crept up the spines of his two subordinates, disbelief etched onto their faces. How is, this possible? In the next instant, Zombie launched himself into the air. The powerful shockwave directly sent the three of them flying, and the nearby seawater receded several meters. Ah Go managed to catch one of his men, while Inspector Chen was flung dozens of meters away. When they looked for Zombie again, he had vanished. Where is President Zombie? Ah Go produced a mini version of the Havel binoculars, see for yourself. The weathered moon came into view first, followed by the distant Saturn, a staggering one. Three billion kilometers away from Earth. As the lens zoomed in, Inspector Chen spotted Zombie on Saturn, his gaze fixed on her. Her face a mask of disbelief, Inspector Chen stammered, how? How is this possible? Her subordinates curiously peered over, their shouts echoing, holy shit, this is insane. Is he even human? Meanwhile, on Saturn, Zombie stretched out his palms, morphing them into hooked claws. With a violent backward pull, a fifth of Earth's seawater ascended towards the sky. Gathering his strength, Zombie unleashed a fierce punch towards Earth, triggering the seawater to return to the planet, forming a hundred-meter-high tsunami. The sight left Blackie and the others petrified. Ah Go promptly thrust his fist into the ground, using his body as a shield against the incoming waves. Simultaneously, tremors reached the headquarters of Guangzhou province, knocking Violet and Dawn to the ground. The sight that met their eyes had them screaming in shock, a tsunami stretching for thousands of miles was barreling towards the city. Despite activating the Level 1 Emergency Response Program, Guangzhou Province couldn't hold back the raging tsunami. 
Suddenly, a loud thud resonated from the tsunami center, it was Zombie, having returned from Saturn. So, are you satisfied with my abilities? Am I qualified to protect this city? Looking at such a terrifying zombie, Inspector Chen was shocked and speechless. After Zombie stopped using his powers, Inspector Chen quickly hailed a taxi and fled from H-City. She hurriedly took a cab and fled H-City. Looking at the fleeing Inspector Chen, Zombie was all smiles. Ah Go said with some sympathy, have we gone too far? I guess Inspector Chen has left behind a not-so-small psychological shadow, it's impossible for her to take back the city now. Just like this, the investigative trio that came in with great vigor, went back like a dog with its tail between its legs, having been deeply convinced by Zombie's terrifying strength. After going back, Inspector Chen was even more mentally deranged and took a default attitude towards the city managed by Zombie. Meanwhile, on the other side, in the underground prison where Professor Jamie was held, the corpse of the Zombie King was lying quietly in the laboratory. And it was guarded by a Grand President level character. Just as they were lamenting how Zombie was able to kill such a terrifying species, behind them, a scientific researcher in a white coat was modulating something. And this person was the same spy who had secretly bugged Professor Jamie by delivering food to him earlier. At this moment, Professor Jamie was teaching him to make a solution called CHR-47 through the bug. And as long as this solution is fused with the corpse of the Zombie King, it can recover again even if the consciousness dissipates. After the spy hides the solution in his white coat, he directly injects the solution into the corpse of the new necromancer while the president is getting ready to go out on patrol and the doctor lets his guard down a little. The president and the doctor who saw this scene were shocked at the sight. The president then rushed to subdue the spy with a sprint, after which he loudly questioned, what kind of person are you? What have you done to the zombie king's body? But just then, the zombie king suddenly opened its eyes. In the next second, a violent explosion occurred in the laboratory. Subsequently, the sound of the invasion alarm rang throughout the prison. At this moment, Professor Jamie revealed a sly smile, looks like my plan worked. Only to see that the originally dead zombie king had actually resurrected. At this time, Professor Jamie ordered, kill them all and take me out. I can make you as powerful as zombie. With that, the zombie king began wreaking havoc inside the prison in a rescue attempt. Meanwhile, an airplane was rapidly approaching from outside the prison. It turned out that just 31 minutes earlier, the ghost queen and her followers had hijacked an airplane. They used the passengers as leverage, forcing the captain to follow their designated route. It seemed that a hundred mile radius around Professor Jamie's prison was heavily fortified with warning barriers. The only way to approach the prison was via their current method. At this point, one of the Ghost Queen's minions questioned, the humans have installed a self-destruct device on Professor Jamie, should we devise a battle plan? On hearing this, the Ghost Queen scoffed. How could I be your queen if I can't even neutralize this simple human trick? She commanded her followers to stick to the plan. One of them stepped forward, kicked open the hatch, and jumped out. They were preparing to mount a forceful attack on the prison to rescue Professor Jamie. When the prison guards discovered the hijacking, they were stunned. How could anyone be so audacious? Thirty presidents are guarding this place. In response, President Ng hastily ordered a defensive formation. Upon hearing his orders, the soldiers began firing frantically at the intruders. But the invaders nimbly dodged the bullet storm, causing chaos above the prison. The Ghost Queen watched the mayhem and sneered, the best response to recklessness is to be even more reckless. At that moment, the Grand Presidents, situated 500 meters underground, looked up with shock, unable to comprehend what was happening for a moment. And 3,000 meters below them, the recently resurrected Zombie King made his move. With a resounding bang, the President in charge of guarding him was thrown against the wall, immediately losing his strength. The Zombie King paid him no mind and marched straight into the room where Professor Jamie was held. In all honesty, both you and Zombie are people I hate. I'd be pleased if either of you were to die. Bespectacled man was taken aback by this, that's not how the script goes. Professor Jamie, however, merely snorted at the comment. You got cocky after fighting Zombie, thinking you're invincible except for him. You must remember, I created you. I can resurrect you, and I can just as easily end your life. Trying to play mind games with me. You're still too naive. 
Realizing his strategy had been seen through, the zombie king felt a pang of panic. He believed every word that Professor Jamie said was true. At this point, the doctor spoke again, however, you don't have to worry. Once you help me achieve my dream, I will end my own life. The zombie king chuckled, indeed, when you humans go mad, you're far more terrifying than any other creature. Is it true that you can make me as powerful as zombie? As long as you can get me out of here, not only can I make you as powerful as zombie, but I can also make you surpass him. The scene shifts back to the conflict on the ground. In the face of the Ghost Queen and her minions' relentless assault, President Ng hastily marshals his forces for defense. Noticing the unusual circumstances from their location 500 meters underground, Grand President's gang and Chin wasted no time in providing their support. The Ghost Queen glanced down at them, her nose wrinkling with a cold snort. Disdain was etched across her features. She then turned to Lan Ling and the rest, instructing, Stand back all of you, I'll handle them. Her entrance immediately instilled a sense of threat in the Grand Presidents. Who exactly are you all? Instead of responding, the Ghost Queen took a step forward, declaring chillingly, two options, hand over Professor Jamie or face death. Upon hearing this, President Ng surged forward with his stick. Grand Presidents Gang and Chin transformed into their most powerful forms, flanking him on both sides, and launched a united offensive against the Ghost Queen. What a collection of ignorant small fry. Let me show you my power. With a thunderous boom, President Chin's severed arm was the first to plummet 3,000 meters underground. Then, the three major presidents also fell, all losing their combat strength. They were even unaware of what had just transpired. The soldiers who witnessed this scene were instantaneously dumbfounded. Their guns swung to point at the Ghost Queen. The Ghost Queen looked visibly taken aback at the sight. What is this? In the immediate following second, the soldiers pulled their triggers, releasing a wild hail of bullets towards the Ghost Queen. However, the bullets that struck her body promptly morphed into clumps of iron, leaving even her eyes unscathed. The Ghost Queen stood unmoved, seemingly enjoying the spectacle, so this is the extent of human technology. With a tremendous explosion, the base fell momentarily silent. Concurrently, in the room where Professor Jamie was being held captive, the zombie king managed to rescue Professor Jamie from the giant bomb. The spectacled man queried, didn't they agree it would explode if we got closer? Why are we unharmed? Professor Jamie clarified, no device is foolproof. There's a two-second window for the detonator after the power is cut off. The spectacled man, clinging to the professor's ear, cautioned, the zombie king is already powerful, do you really want to make him stronger? I fear it may negatively affect his personality. On hearing this, Professor Jamie expressed his resignation, we have no other option, there's no better vessel than him. As they stepped out of the room, the sight before them left the zombie king bewildered. All around them, people lay scattered on the ground, even the formidable grand presidents they had previously encountered had lost their combat prowess. As they struggled to comprehend the situation, the ghost queen stepped out from the shadows, greetings, Professor Jamie. A zombie that has been pummeled and crushed by zombies second form is hardly a suitable vessel for you. Upon hearing her words, Professor Jamie and the others instantly surmised that she too was aware of zombies' additional forms. The zombie king regarded her with a hostile gaze, but the ghost queen paid him no heed and proposed, I can offer my body for your research, what do you think? Hearing this, the zombie king let out a scornful laugh. Hee <laughs> hee, interesting. Are you suggesting you're stronger than I am? The Ghost Queen, surrounded by an aura of blood mist, retorted disdainfully, to me, you're nothing more than trash. You can test it out if you don't believe me. The Zombie King, feeling belittled, was instantly enraged. He threw a punch at the Ghost Queen, but she easily sidestepped his attack. Simultaneously, she began to gather strength in her own fist for a counterattack. A loud bang echoed as the zombie king took a solid punch to the face. Just when Lan Ling and the rest thought that the ghost queen had mellowed after being frozen for a thousand years, her demeanor swiftly changed in the next second. An immense force erupted from the ghost queen's body. The zombie king was sent flying like a cannonball, smashing directly into the stone wall behind him. He didn't stop until he reached the room where Professor Jamie had previously been imprisoned. Witnessing this scene, both the Grand President and Professor Jamie wore expressions of disbelief. 
At this moment, the zombie king was grinding his teeth in anger, damn it, who would have thought such a power existed? It's comparable to zombies. He glanced at the nuclear bomb beside him, then clenched his fists, apparently ready to detonate the nuclear bomb, whether it's zombie or you, I'll wipe you all out. Under the horrified gazes of the crowd, he slammed his fist onto the nuclear bomb. Subjected to an external force, the nuclear bomb was immediately engulfed in flames and looked ready to explode. But just at that moment, the Ghost Queen calmly raised her palm and forcefully pushed downwards. The nuclear bomb, which was on the verge of exploding, abruptly returned to its original state. The crowd was in shock, how is this possible? At that moment, a sudden powerful force of gravity flattened the nuclear bomb into a discus, and the zombie king was instantly pinned to the ground. No matter how hard he struggled, he couldn't get up. At this moment, the Grand President and the others looked at the Ghost Queen in terror. With such strength, how did you dare to claim the title of king? Then, with a casual wave of her arm, the zombie king was abruptly pulled towards her and held by the throat, do you remember how zombie killed you before? At these words, the zombie king froze. Then, he looked at the ghost queen with a terrified expression. He saw her deadly gaze fixed on him. In an instant, he felt as insignificant as a mole cricket in front of the ghost queen. The feeling was strikingly similar to the one zombie had given him. You are the same as zombie, both products of the last civilization. As the zombie king let out a wretched scream, his arms went limp just like the last time. Know your place, the ghost queen casually tossed the zombie king onto the ground. Just like that, the newly resurrected zombie king was killed once again. Upon hearing this, Professor Jamie was initially taken aback. Then, a satisfied smile spread across his face. Ah, zombie, I finally found a more suitable vessel. Enjoy the rest of your time. Meanwhile, inside the municipal building where Zombie worked, Violet was hastily making her way towards Zombie's office. Seeing this, Ah Go rushed to intercept her, insisting it was not the right time to see the king. Violet retorted loudly, what are you stopping me for? I have urgent business with your boss. Show me the way, now. Ah Go replied helplessly, it's too dangerous to see the king at this moment. Violet, puzzled and oblivious to his implication, pushed open the door to Zombie's office. Upon seeing Zombie in his secondary form, cradling a glass of red wine and smiling at her, she was taken aback. Why are you in this form? She asked. Zombie, with a smile, responded, sometimes it's quite pleasant to live differently. So, what brings you here? Violet then remembered why she had come. But when she told Zombie about Professor Jamie's escape, he was unfazed and said he already knew. Your bunch of trash stand no chance against Little Red, he commented. Violet was astounded. It happened less than 10 minutes ago, how could you know? She asked. Zombie explained, I could sense Little Red activating her bloodline power. Upon hearing it was bloodline power, Violet was initially shocked, then resolved to relay this information back. However, just as she prepared to leave, Zombie pulled her into his arms. Now that you're here, don't rush off. How about a candlelight dinner, followed by a tour of my city? At the mention of a city tour, Violet panicked and tried to free herself from Zombie's grip. Your idea of a city tour? Don't think I don't know what you did to Inspector Chen. Don't even think about it, seeing Zombie still looking at her teasingly, she quickly mentioned the tense situation, intending to escape the Zombie's clutches. Just then, Zombie spoke up, don't you want to understand how to use my bloodline power? Hearing this, Violet froze before turning to look at Zombie, her face a picture of shock. Since her last bite from Zombie, her power hadn't increased at all, so she decided to stay. Alright, for the sake of power, I'll accompany you on this date, she said reluctantly. Meanwhile, at a hospital in Guangzhou province, several high-ranking officials hurriedly arrived. The doctor noticed that the President Qin seemed to have something to say and leaned in to listen. All he could make out from the frail voice was, call the department head. Meanwhile, Professor Jamie and his team arrived at the secret base. Immediately, Professor Jamie began a comprehensive analysis of the Ghost Queen. Upon seeing the bizarre data, he couldn't contain his excitement, exclaiming that it defied all scientific principles. At this point, Lon Ling expressed his concern, if the zombies' genes are unusable, don't blindly continue your research and damage our king's body. Hearing this, the bespectacled man confidently reassured him, don't worry, 
Professor Jamie's research is at the pinnacle of all human beings. Professor Jamie then added, Zombie has successfully transformed other humans before, and while your great king isn't human, I can handle it. Now, the only issue is acquiring Zombie's genes. Upon hearing this, Lan Ling and the others broke out in a cold sweat, you're not suggesting we extract the genes directly from the zombie, are you? Professor Jamie laughed, don't worry, I'm not foolish enough to send you all to your deaths. Only then did Lan Ling and the others breathe a sigh of relief. At this point, the girl asked with uncertainty, so how do we obtain the zombie's genes? It's not like he's going to voluntarily hand them over. The Ghost Queen also looked at Professor Jamie in confusion upon hearing this. The bespectacled man chuckled, then pulled out a vial of green blood from his pocket. It turned out they had already obtained the zombie's genes well in advance. Damn, how did you guys manage that? Professor Jamie explained while adjusting the formula, a girl had previously been exposed to the zombie's genes. During her examination to confirm whether she turned into a zombie, our spy managed to draw a vial of her blood. The bespectacled man added, having a spy can be quite handy at times. Hearing this, Lan Ling and his companion were rendered speechless for a moment, humans truly are cunning and devious creatures. Meanwhile, at a five-star restaurant in H City, Violet and Zombie were enjoying a candlelit dinner. So this is how I can use your powers. Are there any side effects? What if I can't revert back? Zombie simply giggled, choosing not to answer. As Violet was about to repeat her question, she realized that Zombie had already transformed back into his original form. Seeing this, Violet became instantly livid, could you at least answer my question before changing back? I sacrificed something important for this date with you, and you're ignoring me. Change back immediately. Zombie refused him flatly, you came here willingly. I never said I required your company. Hearing this, Violet shouted at the waiter, where are your chili peppers? Give me two pounds. The waiter hurriedly explained, our city's chili peppers have all been destroyed by department head Blackie. Two months later, Lan Chi once again visited the Grand President Qin at the hospital. The Grand President asked weakly, I requested you to summon the department head back earlier, has that been done? Lan Chi reassured him, don't worry, I sent a red emergency satellite message as soon as I received the news. Though, it's astounding that with all your manpower and voice-activated nukes, the doctor was still rescued by a woman. Hearing this, the Grand President expressed his helplessness, the enemy this time is different, it feels like she's from a different era altogether. Despite the nuclear bomb being detonated, I have no idea how she managed to suppress it. Taking in the Grand President's words, Lan Chi grew serious, I hope the department head will return soon. Meanwhile, in an archaeological site of an ancient underground civilization, the department head was directing his team in their exploration. As they examined the myriad artifacts far surpassing the contemporary civilization, a shared sense of awe filled their hearts. It appeared as though a catastrophic conflict had once ravaged this place, how else could such an advanced civilization have vanished? At that moment, a team member received an urgent message from Guangzhou province and promptly relayed the news of Professor Jamie's capture and subsequent escape to the department head. However, the department head didn't have the time to pay him any mind, as his attention was wholly focused on a corpse. Upon scanning the body, the department head noted over 150 fractures scattered across it, as if some monstrous entity had crushed it. At this point, the team member chimed in, it seems our journey wasn't in vain, we finally unearthed something of value. Yet, the department head replied, somewhat despondently, the reason this body has preserved so well over a millennium is that all its human tissue has been incinerated. It's little more than a hollow shell now, bereft of any significant scientific value. With that, he began to turn away, ready to inquire about the news from Guangzhou province. A team member reported, the Beyonders Academy managed to find a president with considerable skill, who succeeded in capturing Professor Jamie. However, Jamie was subsequently rescued, resulting in severe injuries to most of the presidents, and leaving our headquarters critically low on combat power. Upon hearing this, the department head promptly ordered a return to Guangzhou province. Just as they were preparing to leave, another team member discovered an object in the dust. Brushing it off revealed a badge inscribed with ancient characters. Simultaneously, a rumbling sound resonated from below, and several small orbs flew out from the surroundings. Instantaneously, a holographic figure appeared behind the ancient remains. 
Excellent, for the first time in a thousand years, I see a human with such robust physique, he proclaimed. The team was taken aback. Is this some kind of animated corpses? The department head, however, calmly explained, there's no need to panic, this is merely a holographic projection. This elder has manifested likely because he has some unfulfilled desire. I wonder how we, the younger generation, can assist. At this, the projected figure in the green robe slowly spoke, if you vow to defend human civilization to the death, I can grant you strength beyond your current capabilities. The department head, slightly taken aback, responded, protecting human civilization is my utmost duty. I came here to gather information about your ancient society and to understand the circumstances of its downfall. Upon hearing this, a screen materialized behind the green-robed figure, our downfall was due to this man. As he finished his sentence, the portrait of Zombie appeared on the screen. It transpired that a thousand years ago, Earth was vastly different from its current state, divided into two continents. Back then, Earth was divided into seven continents and eight oceans, with hundreds of nations experiencing an unparalleled era of prosperity. To protect Earth more effectively, humanity came together, pooling resources to establish an interstellar civilization. They not only achieved interstellar travel, but also reached unprecedented technological heights. They were so advanced that alien technology seemed trivial in comparison, and the terrestrial beasts were the least of their concerns. Despite their sophisticated civilization, they failed to eliminate this zombie depicted before them. Upon hearing this, the department head and the others were taken aback in disbelief. They could never have fathomed that the entity responsible for the annihilation of human civilization was this seemingly adorable, somewhat cute-looking zombie before them. The subordinate standing by was skeptical that this ancient person before them was trying to fool them, given that the guy didn't look the least bit threatening. But as soon as he voiced his doubts, the department head immediately shot him down. Over the years, mankind has built so many academies to combat zombies. Although we've always managed to keep them at bay, we've never been able to eradicate them. You really think an ancient person would joke about something like this? And have you noticed? Since the day we were born, it seems like zombies have always existed. At this, the subordinate hesitantly replied, so, it's because of this guy. The department head didn't answer him and instead turned to the virtual human, your advanced civilization was destroyed by this creature. What do we have now to fight against it? The virtual human stated, I embedded my memories into an AI before my demise, in the hope that future generations would find this place. Back then, we focused solely on technological development, but your generation has taken a different path. It seems that body cultivation can also reach incredible heights, and it is you who have shown me this hope. Upon finishing, the large gate behind him slowly opened, and an object flew out from within. In no time, Thanos' glove appeared before everyone's eyes, with your strong bodies, honed through your cultivation, and our ancient wisdom, you can certainly defeat it. Remember, no matter what groups appear in the world, zombies are the greatest enemy of humankind. With that, the image of the ancient person faded away. After ordering a subordinate to secure the glove, the department head bowed deeply towards the remains of the ancient person, rest assured, ancestor. Even if it costs me my life, I will slay this zombie myself. Having said this, he ordered everyone to leave with their gear. At this point, one of the subordinates asked, should we start searching for the zombie from the video? Hearing this, the department head replied helplessly, the world is so vast, finding one specific zombie is like looking for a needle in a haystack. It's no easy task. Give my orders, we return to headquarters first to deal with Professor Jamie's issue. The scene switches to Violet, who receives a message that the department head is returning, zombie, the department head is coming back. Notify all the officers to assemble for a meeting. You should go too. Hearing this, the zombie looked completely baffled, the department head. Never heard of him. Meanwhile, in the secret underground base, Professor Jamie was intently staring at the petri dish in front of him. Suddenly, he began to laugh manically, it's a success, the queen's body has successfully integrated zombies' genes. At this moment, inside the petri dish, the vampire queen was immersed and absorbing the potion modified by zombies' genes. Outside, however, Lon Ling was squatting on the ground, looking anything but happy. He was worriedly looking at a coin in his hand. The vampires were now dirt poor, and as the chief steward of the vampires, 
he couldn't support his clan even if he worked 20 jobs a day. This last coin was one he had begged for. Thinking about his plight, he couldn't help but shed tears. Just then, a subordinate leaned over and whispered in his ear, Brother Lon Ling, we have hands and feet, why not get a side job? Upon further inquiry, Lon Ling discovered that the side job this guy was referring to was robbing a bank. It turned out that he had passed by a bank earlier and noticed that everyone inside moved slowly, just like the sloths in Zootopia. So he suggested that they rob the bank together. With their speed, they could finish the job in 10 seconds, without anyone noticing. Upon hearing his proposition, Lon Ling suddenly became interested, all right, for our vampire brethren, I will accompany you on this heist. Meanwhile, at the headquarters of Guangzhou Province Academy, a subordinate reported to the department head, department head, all the presidents have arrived. We can start the meeting now. Hearing this, the department head immediately put on his helmet. With his command, a row of black cars slowly set off. At the same time, when Zombie and Violet came to the headquarters for the meeting, a bank in his hometown, City H, was being targeted by a few petty thieves. Lon Ling was seen squatting on the street, looking impatient, you are dilly-dallying. I really don't know what big things you guys can accomplish. As soon as his words fell, a van stopped in front of him. Seeing this, Lon Ling quickly signaled his subordinates to start their operation. Once they got in the car, Lon Ling and his team immediately grabbed their gear. To ensure the plan went off without a hitch, Lon Ling confirmed once more, how's the preparation? Any oversights? At this point, Brother Chicken had assured, Brother Lon Ling, you can rest easy. We've investigated thoroughly. This is the time when there's the least amount of people, we're professionals at robbing banks. With that, the disguised group got out of the van and headed straight into the bank. What they didn't notice, however, was the glaringly bright word Zombie People's Bank atop the building. One could only wonder if they would still have the courage to proceed if they knew. As soon as they entered the building, they confidently started firing, and in the blink of an eye, they had control over everyone in the scene. When Lon Ling saw the money, he couldn't help but grin, hastening to stuff it into his suitcase. Meanwhile, at department head Blackie's financial building, Blackie was sipping coffee while listening to a financial report from a subordinate, department head Blackie, the financial report for February has been compiled, and the revenue for this month has reached 435.6 billion. Upon hearing this, Blackie was quite satisfied, but as the most reliable subordinate of the zombies, he wouldn't tolerate any oversights in finance, so he gestured for his subordinate to tally the numbers once more. Just as the subordinate promised to finish as soon as possible, Blackie suddenly noticed something unusual at the bank. It turned out that after Lon Ling and his team had finished robbing the bank, they casually dropped a smoke grenade while escaping. At this moment, a soldier rushed to Blackie to report the situation. When Blackie learned that the bank had been robbed, he was momentarily startled. As Lon Ling and his crew drove towards the outskirts of the city, Lon Ling looked at the banknotes in his hand, contemplating how he wouldn't have to live a hard life anymore, a soul-shaking voice echoed in his ear, Lon Ling, you are quite bold. Upon hearing this, Lon Ling looked back, annoyed. But when he saw Blackie standing on the rooftop staring at him, Lon Ling immediately broke out in a cold sweat, damn, how did he get here? He then grabbed the collar of his subordinate, you big idiot, what bank did you have me rob? The subordinate looked completely bewildered, I don't know either, I can't read. At this point, another subordinate with a dictionary chimed in, I think the bank we robbed is called Zombie People's Bank. Upon hearing this, Lon Ling nearly fainted, his eyes rolling back. He then sneakily glanced back, only to be terrified to the point where his facial features began to distort. At this moment, Blackie had already switched to battle mode, dare to rob my bank, I won't let you off this time. Do you have any idea how serious the consequences of angering Blackie are? He simply punched towards the building, and cars within a few kilometers were instantly sent flying into the air. Lon Ling was directly punched out of sight by him. Just now, Lon Ling and his gang had robbed Zombie People's Bank. Blackie, as the department head of finance, was immediately furious upon learning about this. He instantly set his sights on the vehicle where Lon Ling and his gang were. When Lon Ling saw that it was Blackie who was chasing them, he was so scared that he almost fainted. He then yelled at his men, drive fast, shake him off. That guy is the most mysterious subordinate zombie accepted 800 years ago. However, 
before he could finish his words, he heard Blackie angrily say, I don't know what you and your queen want to do, if you want to live, give me the money back now. With that, he jumped into the air and punched down on the building below. The powerful force instantly spread downwards through the building. The next second, all vehicles within a few kilometers were floating up. Seeing this scene, Lan Ling and his gang were immediately startled, this is too exaggerated, boss, the little money we stole is not enough for you to repair these cars. Seeing that Blackie was staring at them, Lan Ling knew this was not the way to go. So he gritted his teeth and jumped onto the roof of the car, you guys split up and run, go back and tell the queen we're in trouble. I'll hold him off here. We both serve as the head stewards, I'm curious to see just how strong you really are. But as soon as his voice fell, Blackie punched him in the face, to be on par with me, you're not worthy. With a loud bang, Lon Ling was blasted into the sky by Blackie. The other two who witnessed this scene were stunned, my gosh, is this guy insanely strong? Meanwhile, at the headquarters in Guangzhou province, all the bigwigs at the president level had gathered. It didn't take long for the department head to arrive as well. I've already received the news of Professor Jamie's escape. However, before that, there's something more important I need to discuss with everyone. After saying this, he signaled his subordinates to begin. They pressed a button and instantly a platform rose, carrying the golden glove. Upon seeing the glove, all the presidents revealed puzzled expressions. What is this? At this point, the department head explained, I discovered this glove while exploring ancient ruins. It can be regarded as the crystallization of ancient technology. Hearing this, all the presidents were taken aback. They didn't expect this unassuming glove to be a product of ancient technology. At this point, President Ng exclaimed with excitement, with this ancient technology, can't we easily deal with Professor Jamie and that strange woman? However, the department head expressed at this moment, there's no need to use this thing to deal with Jamie and the others. We need to use this to deal with a more terrifying monster. According to the description in the ancient people's residual images, there is a terrifying monster on our earth. The ancient civilization was exterminated by this monster. Upon hearing this, the several presidents were shocked. Violet asked incredulously, department head, you're not joking, are you? Is there really such a terrifying creature on earth that can even exterminate ancient people? Hearing this, the department head confirmed with a serious face, I've seen what that monster looks like. Although it looks completely harmless, the ancient people said it's an extremely dangerous existence. Violet asked the department head in shock, do you know where this monster is now? The department head expressed helplessly, I don't know where he is now. The ancient people didn't provide much description about him. After sharing a photo of the monster, he disappeared completely. Just then, Zombie looked up curiously and asked, did the ancient people teach you how to use this thing? Hearing this, the department head replied, the ancient people didn't say, but it doesn't look difficult. It should be worn on the hand, and then you press the button in the middle. So we need to find this monster as soon as possible and then use the glove to get rid of him. Upon hearing this, Zombie also agreed with the department head's words. But just then, the department head seemed to suddenly think of something, and immediately he lowered his head to take a closer look at Zombie. Seeing this, Zombie was confused, what's wrong, department head? Is there something on my face? The department head blurted out a curse word, and then reached for the golden glove. Seeing this, the several presidents were utterly dumbfounded. Before they could figure out what was going on, a figure suddenly shot in from outside. With a loud bang, the figure directly hit the headquarters building and crashed all the way into the conference room. Dust filled the conference room immediately. As the dust settled, the department head already had the glove in his hand. At this time, Violet and Lan Chi were surprised to find that the one who crashed in was a person, and he was Lan Ling, who had previously been punched and sent flying by Blackie. While everyone was still trying to understand what happened, another figure quickly rushed over. With a thud, Blackie also chased after them. Seeing that Lan Ling had been punched into the building by him, Blackie still had a face full of anger, hurry up and give me my money back. At this moment, Lan Ling was regretting deeply, thinking, I'm probably going to be screwed by my subordinates this time. At this time, Violet also noticed Blackie outside, isn't this zombie's subordinate? How could he appear here? Zombie was also puzzled when he saw Blackie, did something happen at home? Why would Blackie suddenly lose control? 
Just then, the department head subordinate reminded everyone, I didn't detect human breath on this guy, he's a zombie. As the headquarters of humans, it was surprising to be attacked so blatantly by a zombie, which made the presidents feel disgraced. They swarmed towards Blackie. President Ng angrily said, Stinky zombie, you are too arrogant, do you know where this is? Upon hearing this, Blackie ferociously replied, I don't care where this is, if you dare to stop that kid from giving back the money, I will destroy this place right now. Saying that, he kicked directly at President Ying's face, followed by a punch to President Qin's stomach. In the blink of an eye, several presidents were knocked out by him. President Ng, like Lan Ling, was directly punched into the conference room. Lying on the ground, President Gang helplessly said, What is this thing? Why are we always the ones to get hit? We are also presidents, why do we always play this role? Dawn was also startled by this scene, this, this one is stronger than the one with the chainsaws, they are not on the same level at all. Meanwhile, Lan Ling and President Ng, in the same position, were embedded in the wall, looking utterly despondent. Just then, Blackie suddenly jumped into the air, emitting a large amount of black substance from his body, if you dare to stop me, then all of you will die. Dawn just wanted to touch what the black thing was, but Violet on the side hurriedly stopped him. As everyone was unsure of what to do, Zombie suddenly teleported to Blackie's front. With a bang, Blackie was solidly hit by a punch from Zombie. Instantly, the madness in Blackie's eyes disappeared, and the powerful shock wave sent Violet and the others flying out. Lan Chi was even unlucky enough to hit the wall. Seeing Zombie's combat power, a subordinate exclaimed in shock, department head, this president is so strong. At this time, the department head began to put on the glove, I didn't expect this guy to be more powerful than I imagined. Presidents are like ants in front of him. It seems that what the ancients said is true. Meanwhile, Zombie took Blackie to the rooftop. Blackie was startled when he saw Zombie, and quickly knelt down, expressing his ignorance that Zombie was also here. However, Zombie didn't mean to blame him, just said lightly, you can't kill them. This is the president's headquarters, our city was given by them. Just then, Zombie felt a surge of energy approaching. The department head had also put on the glove, and suddenly a powerful energy surged into his body. But at this moment, the sun suddenly seemed to have been bitten off by something, and in just the time it took to breathe, it was again mostly covered. Seeing this, Violet and the others thought the department head had caused a solar eclipse, but the department head said that he didn't do it. As they were talking, the sun had been completely covered. The citizens in the city were also incredulous, what's going on? How could the solar eclipse happen so quickly? At this time, the presidents also felt something was amiss and looked up at the sky suspiciously. Just then, the vampire queen suddenly appeared in the sky. It turned out that she had rushed over as soon as she heard that Lan Ling was in danger. After absorbing zombies' genes, I feel like I'm invincible now. The presidents recognized her at a glance, it's her. She's the one who saved Professor Jamie. As soon as his words fell, several more figures rushed over. It turned out to be the red-haired girl leading the others of the Blood Clan. Seeing them, Lan Ling immediately shed tears of grievance, you guys, come and save me. Hearing this, the red-haired girl immediately ordered the rescue of Lan Ling. But before they could get close to Lan Ling, they were choked by the department head's neck and then thrown out of the building. Seeing her subordinate being bullied by a human, the queen immediately looked at the department head with anger. Seeing this, the department head quickly ordered his subordinate, it will be chaotic here in a while, you lead the citizens to evacuate the entire city, leave this to me to deal with. The queen, hearing this, looked disdainful, human, I advise you to mind your own business. But before she could finish her words, she was hit in the face by the department head's punch. The queen snorted, and then immediately returned a kick. Seeing the two fighting back and forth, Violet and the others were shocked, they just started fighting like that? Is this woman that powerful? Just then, Zombie and the others also saw the vampire queen. Blackie immediately suggested if they should go and help, but Zombie interrupted him, let them fight, it's none of our business. The department head appeared and scathed before everyone. He stood up and said to the queen, I'll deal with you first, then I'll handle Zombie. The queen scoffed, big talk. You think with your little ability you can take on Zombie? Upon hearing this, Lan Chi and the rest were puzzled, what does this have to do with Zombie? Meanwhile, 
Blackie and Zombie, who were watching the scene unfold, were also confused, has the department head lost his mind? Just then, the department head began to use the power of his glove. As the button was activated, a powerful energy started to gather towards the glove. Seeing this, the queen wasted no time and whiftly charged towards the department head, saying, I'll deal with you first, then I'll settle the score with Zombie. Soon, the two figures hurtled towards each other. Just as they were about to collide, the queen clenched her fist. On the other side, the department head gathered all his power onto his glove and launched a full force attack against the queen. With a loud bang, the two collided directly. The powerful impact sent Dawn and the others flying. Just then, with a crack, the glove that condensed the crystallization of ancient technology was deformed by the queen's punch. Immediately after, the vampire queen exerted her power again, and the department head screamed as he was blasted into a building, penetrating it completely. The queen snorted disdainfully, and you dared to brag about confronting zombie. Upon hearing this, the department head felt deeply humiliated. As he removed his glove, he grumbled, what a piece of garbage ancient technology. Had I known this, I would have done it myself. The queen responded, among all the humans I've met, you have the strongest physique. If you were born a thousand years ago, with this kind of technology, it's uncertain who would have been the victor. But it's a pity. With that, she flashed in front of the department head, preparing to deliver the final blow. But at this moment, Violet suddenly appeared behind the queen with a knife. With a swish, she used a wide-range killing move, Red Blade. Fortunately, the vampire queen reacted in time and dodged the attack. She looked at Violet in disbelief, how is her ability stronger than that department heads? At this point, Violet placed the knife on her shoulder and said, seems like you've got the wrong person. Your opponent is me. With that, she activated the power of her zombie bloodline. Upon witnessing this, Lan Chi and the Queen were shocked, how is this possible? Meanwhile, the red-haired girl was preparing to rescue the Lan Ling while everyone was distracted. But just then, Dawn suddenly appeared and pinned her on a rooftop. She had also activated her zombie form. Seeing this, the Queen's expression turned serious, what's your relationship with zombie? Dawn turned her head and scoffed, don't be so arrogant. Also, you should worry about yourself for now. Just then, Violet took a step forward, so you're the vampire queen. I would like to see what you're made of. Seeing this, the department head was utterly baffled, Violet, what's happening today? Lan Chi and the others were looking at Violet in shock, something's off with Violet. Is she usually this strong? In the momentary silence on the battlefield, the red-haired girl suddenly shouted at Dawn, damn it, don't underestimate me. With that, she broke free from Dawn's control and created distance between them with a few backflips. Seeing her prey escape, Dawn was surprisingly excited and playful. The red-haired girl was annoyed and said, I'm not like those weaklings you can easily manipulate. If I don't show my strength, will you think I'm a pushover? Hearing this, Dawn playfully replied, then prove it to me with your strength. As soon as she finished speaking, the red-haired girl suddenly rushed forward. But in the next second, Dawn cleanly landed a kick on her chin. The vampire girl looked at her with disbelief all over her face. At this moment, Dawn suddenly lay on the ground and teased, is this your strength? It's nothing special. With that, she shot out and delivered a simple and brutal punch to the airborne vampire girl. The others who witnessed this were shocked, is Dawn really that powerful? At this time, the vampire girl on the battlefield was so angry that she almost bit her molars. Unwilling to admit defeat, she slashed across her palm, using blood to form several clones, and rushed towards Dawn. But in the next second, Dawn directly kicked her real body, and the clones instantly dissipated. How is this possible? Is this person really a human? Meanwhile, the vampire queen on the other side also launched an attack on Violet. Violet swung her blade, creating a flurry of blade shadows that effortlessly dissolved the queen's attack. The powerful force radiated from her, spreading across the entire city in the blink of an eye. The headquarters thousands of meters away could feel the intense vibration. Seeing this, the presidents couldn't believe his eyes, wait, is Violet really that powerful? She's unbelievable. Why does this state feel so much like that guy? However, the queen seemed interested upon seeing this, so you have been enhanced by zombie. But it's a pity, you're no match for me now. The one I'm looking for is zombie, to wash away the humiliation he brought me a thousand years ago. 
Having said that, she slowly closed her eyes. When she opened them again, her pupils had transformed, I've been waiting for this moment for a thousand years. My own strength is more than enough to crush you, let alone me now. I advise you to leave as soon as possible. Feeling the queen's aura at this moment, the presidents and the others were shocked. Violet, however, stood in place unaffected, you're right, my own strength is not as good as yours, even with stimulants, I can't beat you. But, if you're saying that you're going to use it to defeat that mindless guy, I don't agree with that. How about I show you something fun right now? Hearing this, the queen looked puzzled, fun. What do you mean? Violet placed her hand on her face, then looked at the queen with a smile, have you heard of the second form? Bonkai. As these words were spoken, Violet's skin began to flake off. Following that, she started to laugh uproariously, indicating that she was feeling fantastic. Seeing this scene, the others, including Lan Chi, were completely dumbfounded, has this woman gone mad? What is she trying to do? The vampire queen on the battlefield was equally baffled. Just then, Violet swept her hand back, and in an instant, a terrifying energy spread out from her body. The presidents hurriedly shielded themselves with their hands. As this energy dissipated, the vampire queen's pupils dilated instantly. Violet had completed her transformation, not only radiating a terrifying energy but also undergoing a change in appearance. Her delicate face had disappeared, replaced by a skull mask. Seeing this, the presidents almost dropped their jaws to the ground. The queen was also full of disbelief, why can this person use this kind of power? Blackie was also dumbfounded, on the roof, seeing Violet in this form. Zombie, who was watching the show, had a calm look on his face, I didn't expect Violet to master my power so quickly. At this point, the vampire queen's mouth could have fit a light bulb, how? How is this possible? How did she transform into this form? On the entire battlefield, only Dawn was excited to see this form. Just then, the vampire queen suddenly started to freak out, I can't believe this is happening, zombie, I really underestimated you. You keep disrupting my plans over and over again. But before she could finish her sentence, Violet interrupted, do you have time to lament life at this point? I don't think there's any need to waste any more time. Hearing this, the queen instantly transformed her blood into a sword, then in a flash appeared above Violet, you're right, only the weak talk too much. With that, she spun her body in the air and then fiercely slashed down at Violet. Violet immediately held her blade across her chest, swiftly sliding her hand over the blade. Astonishingly, she instantly sharpened the blade with her own blood and swiftly swung a red blade at the queen. With a swoosh, before the queen could even react, a blood mark appeared on her forehead. Immediately afterward, Violet swung her sword again and in a blink of an eye, her body crossed with the queen's and swung countless blades. With a bang, the queen's body suddenly exploded, turning into a sky full of blood that rained down. The presidents who saw this scene were so shocked they couldn't speak. The vampire girl and Lan Ling shed tears of pain. At this moment, a subordinate of the department head reported, with that attack just now, President Violet has destroyed all of that woman's cells. Hearing this, the Grand President Qin was extremely shocked, are you kidding me? Has Violet become this strong? Lan Qi, who had always been at odds with Violet, was full of jealousy, what exactly did Zombie do to this woman? Just as everyone was surprised, Violet slowly turned her head, you're not that frail yet, are you? Do you still want to make a sneak attack? As soon as her words fell, the blood mist in the sky began to condense, and the blood that had originally fallen on the ground began to float into the air. Violet stood in place, quietly watching all of this unfold. Soon, the flesh and bones that the queen had lost reformed, and in just the blink of an eye, the vampire queen appeared in front of Violet, unscathed. The presidents looked on in shock, are these two women even human? At this moment, Zombie on the other side sensed that Litter Red seemed ready to really take action. So he hurriedly jumped off the building with Blackie, planning to change positions and continue watching the show. At the same time, Violet on the battlefield began to speak, that clueless guy said, you're a thousand-year-old creature. Indeed, I can't comprehend you by normal standards. The department head was taken aback at these words, what? Has she also lived for a thousand years like Zombie? Just then, his golden glove on his arm suddenly reacted. At this moment, Zombie came to the headquarters with Blackie, warning everyone, 
it's dangerous here, hurry up and leave. Seeing Zombie, Lan Chi was instantly furious, Zombie, you bastard, what have you done to Violet? Saying this, he chased after Zombie. Seeing Zombie, the queen's face instantly turned gloomy. With a wave of her hand, the sky was immediately covered with dark clouds and a huge vortex began to form in an instant. Violet was also secretly shocked to see this scene, I didn't expect that she, like Zombie, could trigger celestial phenomena. At this moment, the queen coldly looked at Violet, I'll take care of you first. Hearing this, Violet immediately assumed a battle stance, let's see if you can do that. At this point, Zombie had already brought Blackie to a safe place, and Lan Chi and the presidents quickly followed. But just as they were preparing to question Zombie, there was a loud bang, and Violet charged at the queen. Seeing this, the queen swiftly swung several swords. In an instant, the building where Zombie and the others had just stood was hit by the sword energy, and with a bang, it was cut into pieces. The collapsing building fell straight towards Violet. Just as Violet raised her hand to split the building in two, the queen quickly approached her. In a rush, she hurriedly swung her sword to block the queen's blood blade, but was punched in the face by the queen the next second. Violet adjusted her body with the momentum and assumed an attacking posture. Then she made a fierce flip and swung a blade at the queen. Seeing her operation, Lan Chi and others were petrified in an instant. Zombie couldn't help but comment in his heart, it seems that not only do I have violent tendencies after transforming. Violet's blade not only dispersed the dark clouds in the sky instantly, but even the Guangzhou province was split in two. But the blade strike didn't cause any damage to the queen. When she turned her head and saw the destructive power of this strike, her expression immediately became serious, I didn't expect this guy could break through my attack. At this moment, Zombie, who was watching the show, was full of praise for Violet's attack. Lan Chi on the side was shocked, it's ridiculous, can't she be killed like this? Meanwhile, on the other side, the department head who found that his glove was reacting wanted to take it off immediately, but no matter what method he used, he just couldn't remove it. At this moment, Violet landed on a building, but before she could steady herself, the vampire queen appeared in front of her in a flash. Violet didn't even have time to react before she was kicked and sent flying again. Following that, the queen gathered her energy in mid-air and with a swoosh, she chased after Violet. Then, another palm struck Violet. There was a loud bang as Violet hit hard against the building and was then rebounded. But the next second, with a plop, a sword directly pierced her body. I admit that you're strong, but even if you've activated your second form, what can you do to me? The presidents were scared silly at this sight, and Lan Chi also couldn't close his mouth in shock, how is this possible? Was Violet just killed like that? But the next second, Violet suddenly moved. She slowly pulled her own blade from her body and landed directly in front of the queen, you're right, I still can't hurt you, but you can't hurt me either. Seeing that Violet also had an immortal body, Lan Chi rushed to Zombie like a madman, Zombie, give it to me quickly, I want it too. Don't think I don't know what you've done to Violet. But Zombie directly refused her, no, it's too violent. While Lan Chi was being relentless with Zombie, the department head on the other side suddenly experienced something unusual, damn it, what's going on with this glove? Just then, a voice rang in his mind, ha ha, your body now belongs to me. After saying that, a surge of energy drilled into the department head's body from the glove, followed by a large amount of golden substance floating out of the glove. Seeing this, the department head was immediately panicked, damn it, how is this possible, who are you? The next second, the ancient man who had given the department head the glove appeared in his mind. Following this, with a bang, a powerful and ancient energy shot up to the sky. As everyone was wondering what had happened, a giant golden figure appeared in the sky above the earth. He had one foot on the earth and slapped his palm down towards the Guangzhou province, ha ha ha, I've been revived. Seeing this, the presidents and the others wore expressions of shock, what is that thing? Seeing the giant shadow appearing in the sky above Guangzhou province, the fleeing citizens of Guangzhou province were utterly despondent. My god, is this the end of the world? With a bang, the giant hand slammed down, instantly shattering the buildings. Lan Chi and the others were immediately thrown out. Zombie, seeing this, quickly moved through the rubble to them. He punched the President Qin in the stomach, slapped the President Ying in the face, 
and then grabbed Lan Chi's collar, rescuing them in a matter of seconds. But just then, there was a sudden roar from behind him, and a giant hand reached out towards him instantly, directly gripping him in its palm. At this moment, a golden mech standing 10,000 meters tall was hovering above the earth. Looking at the giant object in front of them, Violet and the Queen temporarily stopped fighting. At this point, they noticed the department head standing on top of the mech, roaring in frustration, what do you want to do? I'm sorry, Junior, I used you. Your sacrifice is worth it for the sake of humanity. With that, the golden substance completely swallowed the department head. The people who were saved looked bewildered, this is really off the charts, what on earth is going on? Soon, the department head was completely controlled by the Ancient One, his body changing and being completely covered by the yellow mech. Seeing this, the presidents and the others felt a terrifying energy emanating from the mech. But just then, Violet noticed something in the hand of the mech. It was Zombie, who had managed to break free from the giant mech's hand. The planes flying below the mech looked like miniature models. Mom, what's that, it's so big, and there's a person standing on his fingertip. Seeing this, Violet and the Queen both attacked the Ancient One at the same time, but their attacks were easily blocked by a light shield. With a whoosh, their bodies were instantly controlled by the lines sprayed out by the giant mech. Damned, don't interfere with my quest for revenge against zombie. Hearing this, the Ancient One mocked, we've spent centuries studying just zombies' genes, and you're using him as a stimulant to attack me, it's simply overestimating yourselves. At this point, under the pressure of the giant mech, Zombie directly activated his second form. He chuckled, grabbed the mech's finger, and began to spin like a top. As he spun, the mech's finger also began to spin, followed by a cracking sound from the mech's arm, which then also began to spin. Breaking free from control, Zombie quickly rushed upwards, watch me twist your head off. The ancient one above also noticed the anomaly, and with a bang, he controlled his other hand to slap Zombie. It's been a thousand years, and I finally have a body to my liking. Come on, Zombie, what are you waiting for? Show your true form and fight with me. Hearing this, Zombie suddenly exerted his strength to lift the mech's palm, then I'll fulfill your wish. The next second, Zombie changed form again, and those disdainful dead fish eyes once again appeared before everyone. He threw a punch, instantly blasting the mech's hand away. Seeing Zombie's form, the Queen was visibly taken aback. Just then, the mech slapped down at Zombie again. The Ancient One, seeing Zombie's form, said discontentedly, Zombie, are you looking down on me by taking this form? You damned monster. Hearing this, Lan Chi looked bewildered, Zombie has become his most powerful form, how is it looking down on you? Just then, Zombie again swung his fist, knocking away the mech's arm. The Ancient One, seeing this, snorted coldly. A mechanical sound was heard, and suddenly a row of small ancient mechs appeared on the head of the giant mech. The presidents, seeing this, was directly dumbfounded, is this ancient technology? I feel like I'm garbage in front of them. While they were feeling this, Zombie had already killed his way into the group of mechs, scrapping a mech with every move. At this moment, he was like a god of death. In the blink of an eye, he tore the mechs in front of him into scrap metal. But soon another group of mechs came up. Zombie knew these mechs were just small fry, so he charged his fist and charged directly at them. He threw a punch, instantly annihilating the group of mechs, and his powerful force even blasted away half of the giant mech's body. Seeing this, the Ancient One collided his fists together and said coldly, looks like I still couldn't make you use your full strength. Are you still looking down on me? What about this? As his words ended, a few more giant mechs landed on earth. The presidents were even more dumbfounded at this sight, he actually summoned so many mechs, isn't this a little too much? At this point, the mech surrounded Zombie in the middle. Zombie, I've seen you on that last night before the end, this isn't your true form. Zombie was visibly taken aback by these words. Just as he was distracted, the Ancient One controlled the mech and suddenly punched at Zombie. The powerful force instantly whipped up a level 15 hurricane in Guangzhou province. Zombie, who didn't have time to dodge, was directly hit and with a whoosh, he was blasted away. With a bang echoing from the moon, Zombie was actually punched all the way to the moon. After rolling around on the surface of the moon a few times, Zombie heavily crashed into the ground. At this time, the look in Zombie's eyes towards the ancient mech gradually became cold. 
Just then, seeing the destruction of Guangzhou province, the department head began to resist the ancient one in his consciousness, look at what you've done to Guangzhou province. Do you absolutely have to kill zombie? Shut up, zombie must die. With that said, he suddenly charged up, and the ancient mech actually jumped all the way to the moon, its huge body occupying a fifth of the moon's surface. With a boom, the giant mech's arm instantly swung at the area where zombie was. But just then, a streak of light flew out from his fingertip. Not only was Zombie in scathe, but he also quickly approached the giant mech. Next, he leaped to the chest of the mech, clenched his fist, and slammed it. With a bang, the mech's body shattered in response, the chest and above turned into mechanical dust, and it fell to the ground with a boom. The ancient one who saw this scene were about to make a move, but were stopped by the department head. After returning, I looked at Zombie's files. Since he became the president, he's not as evil as you said. The city he manages is even better than the ones we humans manage, not only generating tax revenue for us, but also bringing us good development. The citizens he manages have also never harmed humans, and he has helped us humans several times, not just stopping a huge air disaster with his bare hands, but also rescuing our young ones from fires. He even frequently helps elderly people cross the road. If he's never harmed humans, why can't he coexist with us? Upon hearing this, the Ancient One angrily told the department head to shut up. Who doesn't want to live in peace? But look at this guy, does he look like he can live peacefully with us? Originally, zombies were just a weak group on Earth, and our ordinary weapons could eliminate them. But we have no idea where zombie came from, and we have no way to deal with him. It's as if our lives and deaths are in his hands, at the mercy of his emotions. To put it bluntly, all the creatures on earth are nothing but ants in his eyes. Therefore, we can't allow such a powerful creature to exist. With that, the Ancient One once again gathered energy, then with a wave of his hand, he threw the energy towards the moon. As the golden energy came into contact with the giant mech, its body began to regenerate quickly. In no time, it turned into an ancient warrior mech holding a giant sword, and behind him were several other warrior mechs also holding giant swords. Zombie, you must disappear from this world today. Divine punishment. With a boom, all the warrior mechs stabbed their giant swords into the moon at the same time, attempting to destroy the moon along with Zombie. At the same time, the Ancient One's body burst with powerful energy, trying to control Zombie's actions. But just then, Zombie's hair suddenly changed. Power. Sometimes, bigger isn't always better. Just as the Ancient One was puzzled, Zombie casually snapped his fingers. In an instant, the bodies of the warrior mech shattered, and the huge golden sword broke in response. The terrifying energy spread around from Zombie's core, even affecting Lan Chi and the others on Earth. This place is no longer safe, all the presidents, please assist the citizens of Guangzhou province to leave here as soon as possible. Just as all the presidents started their actions, Zombie teleported in front of the Ancient One. He punched him in the face, sending him crashing down to the ground like a meteor. With a boom, the Ancient One heavily crashed into the sea, and Zombie returned to Earth along with him. The moment he landed, his hands plunged into the ground, causing a huge crack to spread out instantly. At this moment, the Ancient One was filled with frustration. He hadn't expected that Zombie could completely overpower him in this form. Meanwhile, in Guangzhou province, Lan Qi and the others were helping the citizens evacuate. Just as Lan Qi was running with a baby in his arms, she suddenly noticed cracks appearing on the ground beneath him. He turned to look and saw Zombie, hands pressed against the ground, making a crackling sound. As Zombie continued to exert force, a crack began to spread in an instant. Suddenly, the entire Guangzhou province started to shake violently, as if a magnitude 20 earthquake was happening. Under Zombie's continuous efforts, the crack grew larger and larger. With a roar, a bottomless crack appeared, running through the entire Guangzhou province. With the continuous rumbling sound, the crack spread all the way to the distant mountains, and eventually, the earth was split in two by Zombie. Seeing the scene before them, the presidents were incredibly shocked. Lan Chi slipped and accidentally fell into the crack. Fortunately, the president Ng, grabbed her hand in time and saved her. This zombie is too terrifying, this isn't something a carbon-based life form could do. At the same time, the ancient one who had been punched into the deep sea by zombie also surfaced. 
With a whoosh, Zombie immediately appeared in front of him and punched him in the stomach. The power of this punch sent the Ancient One all the way to the South Pole. While the Ancient One was coughing violently, he said to the department head, Junior, do you see it? This is the destructive power of this monster. Just then, the Ancient One was surprised to find that the tsunami that was heading towards the city suddenly stopped. Zombie was standing on top of it, staring at him with cold eyes. His appearance had changed again, and he had grown long hair that reached his buttocks. Seeing this, the department head was as if struck by lightning, what kind of creature is this guy? Violet, seeing Zombie at this moment, was also shocked. The Vampire Queen was also taken aback, this, this is Zombie. How come I have never seen him look like this before? Upon seeing Zombie's appearance at this moment, the Ancient One laughed excitedly, yes, it's this face. That's the exact face I saw right before everything was destroyed. With that, he flew into the high sky, Zombie, I have finally forced you into this form. Hearing the Ancient One's death courting words, Blackie could only think that this guy had gone mad. He turned and sprinted towards the distance, this Ancient One is definitely going to die. It's not good to stay here, I need to get away quickly. At this moment, the Ancient One in the sky, using the department head's life as a price, condensed a terrifying power of thunder and lightning in an instant, Junior, your body might suffer a bit sorry. But just then, Zombie merely raised his hand, and in an instant, the Ancient One was sent flying, and the energy ring that was forming behind him instantly shattered. Following this, Zombie suddenly clenched his fist. In an instant, the Ancient One's golden mech turned into a lump of iron, and even his soul was erased along with it. With a boom, the terrifying explosion energy rushed straight into the sky, and the Ancient One's golden mech shattered like glass. Until the end, he couldn't understand, why can't I defeat Zombie even when I've become like this? As the Ancient One was eliminated, the department head appeared in front of everyone with a hole in his chest, clearly he was as dead as one could be, Lan Chi and the others had faces full of despair, how could this be? The department head was our strongest human force. At this moment, Blackie reminded Zombie, my lord, the department head cannot die, otherwise all your previous efforts will be in vain. Upon hearing this, Zombie raised his hand and shot a drop of fresh blood towards the department head's body. In an instant, the genes in the department head's body changed, and the missing flesh from the department head's chest began to rapidly repair at a speed visible to the naked eye. His heart also started to thump and beat again. The presidents, upon seeing this, were utterly shocked. The vampire queen was equally astounded, so it can even be like this. Violet felt a wave of emotion in her heart, Zombie. Just how many more tricks do you have up your sleeve? Soon, the department head's consciousness returned, and he looked at his own body in disbelief. At this moment, he finally understood that Zombie was not someone they could defeat. He also understood why the Ancient One wanted to eliminate him at all costs, because this man was simply a monster. They were afraid of Zombie, so they chose to eliminate him. At this moment, the entire battlefield was dead silent, everyone was afraid to accidentally anger Zombie. Just then, a bang broke the brief silence. Violet burst forth and appeared in front of Zombie, but when she looked at Zombie, she found that he had returned to his previous silly appearance, how is it, Violet? Is my bloodline power useful? Upon hearing Zombie's words, Violet relaxed and deactivated her second form. Subsequently, she loudly reprimanded, if you had said earlier that you could have killed him in an instant, why did you bother tearing open the rift? Now, thanks to you, our home is completely destroyed. Hearing this, Zombie said somewhat sheepishly, didn't I just not want to scare others? The Vampire Queen was left speechless by these words. With that, the incident with the Ancient One came to an end. Due to Zombie's actions, the entire southern continent shifted more than a hundred kilometers, affecting the Earth's climate and forming the deepest ocean trench on Earth. Two months later, as several cities in the province had been destroyed, Zombies Architecture Association took full responsibility for the city's reconstruction work. At this time, in the department head's office, he was looking at Zombies' information, deep in thought. After learning why the Ancient One wanted to eliminate Zombie, the department head also dismissed the idea of being Zombie's enemy. So, he called over Inspector Chen and instructed her to go to the market and select several bags of excellent eggs. As the department head, it was time for him to pay a visit to the newly appointed president of H-City. Meanwhile, on the other side, 
the second phase of the Vampire New City project was also in full swing. Lan Ling was on the construction site urging the progress of the project, you guys are hired by me with money, so get moving. When the redhead girl asked Lan Ling where the money came from, he instantly broke out in a cold sweat. At the same time, in H City, Ah Go asked Blackie why he lent money to their sworn enemy, the king said that we should stay obedient and not fight, so as to not let Lan Ling always covet the money in my bank. It's easier to lend it to them. With a high interest rate of 20%, they'll have to work for us for at least 300 years. Hearing this, Ah Go and the others were left speechless, this guy is so black-hearted. Some rejoice while others mourn. At this time, the vampire queen was curled up in her room in a daze. She never could have imagined that zombie could transform again. When she was initially sealed, she had only seen zombie's second form. She didn't expect that when she drugged zombie and launched a sneak attack, she had only witnessed a small part of his power. Seeing zombie in his new form, like a god of killing, she, who has always been strong, shed tears of unwillingness when she knew that she could never defeat zombie in this lifetime. With this, the second season of Mr. Zombie comes to an end. However, at this point, in the previously underground ruins, a man suddenly appears in front of the remains of the Ancient One, and the person who came was none other than Professor Jamie, Zombie, our business is not over yet. As long as I'm not dead, I will definitely erase you from this world. After his victory over the Ancient One, Zombie finally achieved his dream. Not only did he have his own city, but he was also recognized by the Beyonders Academies, taking over the position of President Cheen and becoming the new Grand President of the Academy. Now was the day when the Academy officially appointed Zombie as the Grand President. At this time, in a room, an alarm clock rang, but the next second, the alarm clock was smashed by a slap. Then, the faint snoring of Zombie echoed in the room. After some time, Zombie finally woke up from his sleep. He opened the fridge to see various canned eggs. Zombie casually grabbed a raw egg and swallowed it. At this time, a lifetime of images continuously appeared in his mind. First, he was in school one day, and suddenly turned into a zombie. Then he mindlessly wandered around with his kind, until one day, a group of humans brandishing firearm began to slaughter zombies. To avoid being turned into a perpetual machine, he joined the iron pumping army, living on protein powder and exercise. Eventually, he became invincible and learned to use the power of the zombie bloodline, able to transform into different forms for battle. His first form was cute and a bit silly, the second form was handsome but a complete battle maniac, the third form embodied the strong and silent type, and the fourth form, which was like a super scion transformation. It was in this form that Zombie destroyed the previous human civilization. Since then, Zombie began to tire of war. For peace, he chose to help humans, solving many problems for them in the process. Whether it was the Zombie King or the Ancient One, he was slowly changing human perceptions of zombies. In the end, he achieved his dream and got his own city. But things didn't seem to be going as he expected, because the power he demonstrated began to make humans afraid of him. Just as Zombie was considering what to do next, the doorbell rang. He opened the door to find Violet standing outside. Violet said angrily, Zombie, what the hell are you doing? What kind of leader are you? All the presidents have been waiting for you for two hours. Hearing this, Zombie said he would be right there and then closed the door. The scene shifted to the Beyonders Academies, where Lan Chi was passionately giving a speech on stage, with a huge banner behind her appointing Zombie as the Grand President, we are in a dangerous era, with countless opportunities and challenges. We have witnessed the growth of the Academy, and now Zombie will lead our Academy to prosperity. Please welcome our new Grand President, Zombie. Hearing this, Zombie walked guiltily towards the stage. The presidents down below all stood up straight and shouted, Welcome, Grand President. And then bowed deeply to Zombie. Seeing this, Zombie awkwardly said, Um, good morning, everyone. You must be hungry. I brought you some eggs. Hearing this, the people below were speechless. Some people even spoke up for President Chin, President Chin, with this kind of IQ, how can he possibly replace you? Hearing this, President Chin only said one thing, you better shut up. If you can beat him, you can be the Grand President. Meanwhile, in the department head's office, the Inspector Chen, ran and flustered, it's not good, department head, things have gotten serious. 
This is a direct call from the national president. Hearing this, the department head immediately stood up, what happened? How could it have alarmed the national president? He quickly picked up the phone to understand what had happened. After hearing the orders from the other end of the phone, the department head immediately assured with solemnity that he would accomplish the task, and then hung up. At this moment, Inspector Chen asked in panic, what did the president instruct? Hearing this, the department head explained, it's about the ancients, probably the whole world knows about it now. In disbelief, Inspector Chen responded, how could this be? We had clearly locked down this matter. Hearing this, the department head threw the phone aside, the matter has blown up so much that the other side of the earth knows about it, how could we possibly have contained it? Upon hearing this, Inspector Chen immediately checked his phone. Indeed, there was news everywhere about the intense battle happening in the south and suspected appearances of the ancients. The department head turned to Inspector Chen and said, the exchange meeting is about to start, and many issues are intertwined and hard to resolve. Have you prepared the eggs I asked you to bring for our visit to Zombie? Inspector Chen immediately took out two bags of eggs, stating that they had been prepared long ago. Soon, the department head, carrying two bags of eggs, arrived at Zombie's front door, thinking to himself, since I've made him the grand president, there shouldn't be any problem with me coming over to congratulate him. He then rang the doorbell. But the one who opened the door was an old acquaintance, Violet. Violet, dressed in a maid outfit, stood dumbfounded at the door. Seeing this, the department immediately blurted out, you're Violet. With this outfit, have you and Zombie already? Hearing this, Violet immediately explained, department head, you've misunderstood. It's not what you think. Just then, Lan Chi, also dressed as a maid, greeted, it's the department head. Why are you coming over just now? Seeing this, the department head was as if struck by lightning, even though Zombie has just been promoted to grand president, but you guys are going too wild. With that, he turned and left, stating that he would return to headquarters and report this incident to the relevant departments. Hearing this, Lan Chi was stunned at first, then screamed in realization. Both she and Violet promptly explained, department head, you've misunderstood. We are here to attend the bastard zombies promotion party. We are dressed like this because we lost a game. Hearing this, the department head expressed his doubts, is what you said true? I've never seen you dressed like this for a meeting. Violet blushed, if you don't believe it, you can go in and see for yourself. With that, she opened the door. What came into view was Dawn, also dressed as a maid, and Zombie in pajamas with a note stuck on his face. Across from him was the former grand president with a serious face, Zombie, when it comes to cards, you're no match for me. As he spoke, he drew a card from Zombie's hand, causing him to scream out loud. Just then, there was a sudden pop sound. President Ng had set off a salute. Behind him, the banner read, Zombie, the grand president, has issued his first executive order, anyone who fails to participate in the team building activities will be dismissed from public office. As the department head was watching everything unfold, his brain seemed to have crashed. Suddenly, a bunch of fruits and vegetables flew over. With a few swish sounds, President Gang sheathed his blade, and the fruits and vegetables turned into numerous pieces, falling neatly into the dish, everyone, here is the sushi you ordered. But when President Gang saw the department head standing at the door, their eyes met, creating an awkward atmosphere, department head, it's not what you think. This is not my character design, zombie forced me to do this. Hearing this, the department head coughed dryly to alleviate the awkwardness. Then, he said solemnly to everyone, since everyone is here, I don't have to call a meeting. I have a very urgent matter to discuss with everyone, 